five have entered, but there can only be one in the Bad Movie Multiverse. Welcome back to Bad Movies Rule, the worst podcast ever created. And we're talking about 2001's The One. That was a lot of ones. Let's go. A ton of ones. There can only be one. It's 2001's The One. That's right. All right. And we're number one. We are number one. Depend on what finger you're holding up. Yes. <laughs> the pinky. It's the fine. Pinky it good. depends who pisses me off and how I want to tell him I'm the one. That's right. And welcome <laughs> in. Mr. Ryan Mueller is here. Mayor, how are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. So is is this the movie we have to blame for the stupid freaking Marvel I, multiverse? Uh, did they start the multiverse thing? No. No, probably not. But they tried to popularize they it. They yeah. seemingly no. tried to do that. Yes, they did. You got to remember love- the TV show, Slider. Oh, I didn't know about sliders. What's that? Tell oh, me about Oh, I remember that one. Oh, don't make me describe it. But uh, <laughs> they would go uh, into different times through yeah. a little, you have to be there at the exact time I used or to else watch, you'll miss yeah. it kind of time. Sounds like They'd exactly like it is. Right in. There I was forgot a about that professor one. professor who knew stuff and people well, who could do stuff. You'd well, find yourself in the other one. That's right. And so, yeah, as you can hear, uh, Nicole, a.k.a. The Voice, Freer is with <laughs> us today. How are you doing? Medium well. How are you? <laughs> class in the place Fantastic. Up. And, do my best. And it's always classy. When my, what do you? I just I didn't look over at you now. <laughs> Mel Vandy's got a army helmet on. I got a tingle this morning. <laughs> what? Please tell me you're, you're protecting yourself from another version of yourself. There are multi Mel Vandy's out there, oh, and as I thought about it, <laughs> the horror. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to have. Uh, I don't want to be unalived. No, I appreciate uh, that through that door right there. Yeah. Right. So, Do you want me to close the door? Are you want nope, to face nope. the exit or something? We're good. Want? Okay, you're good. I'm you watching. Line of sight. No, I actually Fantastic. had a dream this morning, and okay. I it was vivid enough to remember. Oh. So, for some reason, mm-hmm. my air conditioner needs to be replaced outside. It sucks. You know, it's joys of home ownership. Yeah. But I went out there this morning in my dream, and it was like kicked in, as was like the whole side of my house. And as a homeowner, I was pissed. Kicked in. Kicked in. So some other Mel Vandy out there, oh. I don't know what he did, but he ruined my, my raspberries. This is his go-to move to get... It was, Wait, uh, are there was raspberries like a... in an air conditioner? No, oh, okay. my raspberries are next to the air conditioner. Okay. Oh. The, I thought we covered this. No. Jet the Lee Vandy came by and started there. kicking in air conditioners. You know what I just realized? I want to see all the pictures of the different Vandys with long hair, curly hair, short hair. <laughs> just the mullet. whole wig mullet. parade. Mullet. <laughs> <laughs> I want to of see it. I would, act, I would, no joke, I'm not even kidding, pay money to see you with a bunch of different so, haircuts. So if, uh, if as they, had, <laughs> they had like Swedish Jet Li, would they have to have like Sudanese Mel Vandy? Did they? But did they though? No, they didn't. I think it was a K-pop uh, <laughs> Jet Li. <laughs> What's that? A fifth But he voice. was from Sweden. That's the whole thing. They a said fifth he was voice from joining us over at the kids table is uh, Dr. Ryan Madela. I'm just glad to be here because for the net, you had a problem with it being there was no net. That's right. And for this, the one... <sighs> There never You're was one. Never was disappointed one. again. Let's just call it the two. The, it's never the one. Not the once not ever. One. The they, not one. They could have called it Deuces Wild or something. That would have been even better. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Let's do, let's get into it. We uh, we are Bad Movies Rule. For those of you who have never listened to the show before, we will review these movies that have fallen under a certain threshold. They've been labeled bad, either by the critics got a low score or the audience gave it a low score. It's under six on IMDb, and we go through the movie scene by scene, and ultimately we come to our own conclusion. Is it really bad? Is it actually good, or is it just an enjoyably bad movie, a.k.a. a bad movie that rules, hence the name? So we're going to jump in, and before we start, we're going to give you the vitals here. Movie The One, again, came out in 2001, 2001, was directed by James Wong of X-Files fame in the Final Destination movies. Anybody ever seen the final? I know you don't like horror movies, but Final Destination. No. Those are, you are aware great of it? movies. Basically, it's like an unseen force. They, they've skipped out on death in these movies somehow. They were supposed to die, and they didn't, and so they die in all kinds of accidental ways. That'll happen. Fate's yeah. coming for you. Exactly. And a movie was written by Glenn Morgan and James Wong, the director, and Glenn Morgan and him are on a writing duo. They've worked together on all of James Wong's projects, TV and film. Movie star Jet Li. I hope I say this right. I think it's Carla Gugino, or it's Gugino. I don't know. I think it's Gugino. Delroy Lindo and Jason Statham. Oh, did you mention Jet Li as well? I said Jet Li. Well, the other oh. Jet Li. Yeah, he was in it too. Yeah, two Jet Lis. And Delroy. Delroy is in there as well. Delroy Lindo yep. and eight Jet Lees. 
Yeah, that's, and I think he got paid right. eight salaries, so good for him. As yeah. he should. More people should start just doing this and playing eight yeah. characters in a movie. Eight paychecks. Right. You know, I think he stole it from Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy got, he made bank. How many times did he get paid for Nutty Professor? Um, all of them. Uh, dude, I, I, I would, no, no joke, if I'm playing seven parts, you better pay me seven times. That's all I got to say. Absolutely. Budget for this movie, maybe because I had to pay him so many times, was $49 million. The box office was only $80 million. Only. Yeah, not enough. Because, uh, again, the theaters keep part of that. So not good enough to... That's why we never got the two or the three. Right. <laughs> we only just got the one. And uh, right now it sits at a 5.9 on IMDb, uh, rated the same as Deep Blue Sea is a former movie we did that was five. That's, the Wraith was a 5.9. Yeah, so was Air America till we did it. So did this it. one's on its way down. That <laughs> bumped down to 5.8. Uh, movie currently has a 13% critic score on Rotten Tomatoes. 13% is so low. And a 51% audience score. So like right down the middle. So with five of us here, maybe two of us are going to like it, two of us are not, and one is just going to leave. They're just, they don't know what to do. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> yeah. We split down well, the middle. I don't think anybody's going to leave Clint ain't here. Oh, so. Clint's not gonna, right, Clint <laughs> remains the only person to ever have walked out of an episode <laughs> ever. The, uh, the critics just don't like Disturbed. And Papa Roach. Is that what it is? That uh, could it be. has to be, yeah. Who stole my Spotify playlist from 2001? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I want to know because all of my jams showed up in this movie. I, it hey, was I thought solid. the movie was off to a good start. I know. With that. I was like, all right. Soundtrack was... Oh, can't wait. Wah. Yeah, yeah, man. All that stuff. And uh, we, we, we hopefully will come to a place of at least understanding, if not agreement. So just so you know, um, we are a primarily roasting podcast. We appreciate that you guys are here. Sometimes just because we give a movie the business doesn't mean we don't like it. So stick with us to the end and we'll give it the awards. Who was the best actor? Who was the worst? We'll go through all of that. But thank you for being here. I want to give a special shout out to our patrons for backing our show. Have just continued to support us. You guys are awesome. Help us to do the things that we do. If you want to get in touch with the show and interact and participate, we are the podcast of the people and we've made a big effort to include your takes in the show. And so there's multiple ways you can do that. You can email the show at this show is trash at gmail.com and we will literally e read those emails and interact with them on a mailbag segment. Or right now, as we're talking about the one, maybe the one is your favorite movie and we're about to trash part of it, or maybe some of us are going to praise it, but you're going to be no doubt at some point yelling at your radio, phone, car, whatever you're listening to this through. I and love wire work! <laughs> instead of doing that, Call our number. You can re call and leave us a voicemail and yell into your phone instead, and we'll also listen and interact with that on the mailbag as well. And that number is 262-757-8567. You can go down in the description of the episode and see that number there. Just save it as a contact. You can just pull it up, BMR, and yell at us, and it'll, it'll be great. We're or you could use a regular volume also. Yeah, if you don't want to scream, you Option. don't have to, but, you know. Clint was asking for people to hang up angrily on us, and you know I'm all for that too. There's not really the phone slam anymore, though. I know I miss That's the phone slam. I miss it. Where you slam it so hard, punctuate and the a bell phone rings. Yeah. Have you slam it? I mean, it was so satisfying. What Ding. do you do now? You just angrily hit your button like, and it's not. It's not even satisfying. They don't even know you did it. You break right. your own finger that Oops. no one cares. No, you more dollars. likely you break the screen on these right. things than your finger. Now you take a picture of your broken finger and send it to him. Look right. what you did. You did this to me. All right, let's... Uh... Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. <laughs> Nobody. Before we jump in, can I just say, can please we get a please, multiverse please. where the place downstairs is open because it smells like barbecue oh, in I here, know. and I am hungry. I, I, it's never... I love Jacobs, and if you're ever in the Burlington, Wisconsin area, stop in. Hopefully, you're here at very specific times. Monday to Saturday, or Wednesday to Saturday, I think it their is. Their hours are so... Like, I can never get in when they're around. I, I don't know. I, the I, table downstairs has reserved. There's right. one table right now that yeah. had a reservation. They got a reservation seven days in advance. Right. You have to. You, you got to with Jacobs. It's that good. Well, look, I do appreciate for anyone that's not familiar with multiverses and how those work, that they do open the movie with a nice multiverse tutorial, right? And, mm. uh, and a voiceover over some lovely animation and explaining... This is not the only universe, but there are multiple universes, and you are not you. You are many yous spread about all of these parallel universes existing simultaneously across time. That there are, in every multiverse thing, whether it's Rick and Morty, Marvel, whoever that I've ever learned, there's infinite numbers of multiverses. Yes. I'm getting another tingle. But apparently, unless I'm wrong, 
There's only 123 multiverses? No, 125. 125, that's it? Well, 123 are victims. That seems like a very left. few Oh, amount. that's true. Yeah. It's very specific. That Nicole did the math. Yeah, only... there's... I got addition down. <laughs> but is that was that a multiverse, though? I don't know. What were you going to say, Ryan? Was... I was, yeah, I was just going to say that that might have been just the ones that he existed in, though. But don't we exist in all of them? No, because your parents might not have married each other in that one. So kind of like a place where you exist. have, like, multiple Ryans. Okay. Right. Yeah. It, that doesn't right. happen, though. That doesn't happen but at this, all. What if you found out you're already the one? Because what if you found out that you're this is the only universe where you happen? If well, that's the a one. plot hole for sure. Because <laughs> if if the if you die in all the other universes, wouldn't you just be the one anyway? And but right. you wouldn't powerful? get stronger because you didn't murder yourself. So is you that have what, to murder them? Well, but yes. the other guy got stronger and he didn't kill anybody. Right. Because it's split between them. One of him did. One of them murdered It's split between them. The power split right. between everybody that was out I there. I did feel like this multiverse intro was very similar to Hands of Steel when she's mm. like, have you ever heard of a cyborg? <laughs> <laughs> right. Cyborg? I Just thought through enough. the death part because I was like, wouldn't mm. everyone who's, who made it to like 95 be jacked? Right. They'd all be like, Grr. every other version of me, I've outlived all of them. And just killing right. it on Jeopardy. <laughs> this one Smarter. doesn't have diabetes. And unlike the Matrix, it'd be like, he's the one, but right. it's not nearly as cool, right? <laughs> yeah, this definitely wasn't. And it came out two years after the Matrix, and so in the opening cr credits are like, someone will be the one. I'm like, okay, guys, this is a little bit little bit derivative. Is it me? <laughs> well, they'll probably explain this later, right? Uh, no, they don't. They actually never explain no. any of the, what the one is. What is what is the one? They speculate through the entire movie what that means. Right. It's the guy that takes the blue pill, right? But no, it's the guy that takes the red pill. Oh, well, I, I think I've been told yeah, I'm the one when I maybe. take the blue pill. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different blue pill. Uh, <laughs> All right, so let's get, in, let's get into it now that we've really muddied the waters. And, and if you're confused, good, because so were we watching the movie. They I watched it don't twice, and I was still confused. Yes. The, uh, let me back up, because I feel like there's one bit I didn't explain right. I know we kind of talked around it. If you go around and eliminate every other version of yourself, you become stronger, and then eventually, no one's done this yet, but if you're able to eliminate all of them, you then become the one. That's the thing they never explain what the hell it means. Never, ever. Right? right. Okay. Never. So... Cut in the first scene that we uh, see anybody. There's a bunch of baseball cops getting ready to throw a doubleheader or something. It was immediately what I thought. They'll start putting on yeah, they start putting gear. on their catcher's oh, yeah. gear. Yeah. You know. The Absolutely. one guy like clenches his jaw and then he goes, and I'm like, that's the bunny sniff that'll really get you focused. <laughs> yeah, he's ready for action. Well, he, he got the smelling salts. He's yeah. just that's how you know. Oh my little, gosh, little have, you ever, have you ever had to smell or was smelling the salts cocaine before? No, that was under his lip. I don't know. Could have been either one. Dean Norris acted like he had jacked with. Cocaine and pre workout. Yeah, yeah he did. For real. Yeah. 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 He wasn't in much of the movie, but no. his name was pretty big at the end. Yeah. It was, and he I he was sweating just standing there. He's like he was clenched his jaw the entire time he was acting. And yeah. I'm like, bro. Makes you sweaty. Yeah, for sure. Have yeah. I, I've no, I haven't smelled smelling salts, but I worked in a plant once where we had an ammonia leak into oh. one of the tanks. Oh no. Yeah, that knocked me down for Is a good that fifteen what they minutes. Are? Is some small some smelling yes. salts. Yeah. Yeah. Ammonia. Yeah, ammonia. Yeah, ammonia. They're ammonia based, but it's not the same as just huffing ammonia. Yeah, yeah it's which not is straight really ammonia. Bad yeah, there's for your other, brain. yeah, bad for your brain. If you okay. huff actual ammonia, but smelling salts specifically are whatever the chemical yeah. balance is. I fell off insane. a counter one time at work. This is way back in like 2000, 2001, right around the time this movie came out, Whoa. and I knocked myself unconscious, and they woke me up with smelling salts. It's the yep. only time in my life, and I remember going like, "Holy crap!" Yep. Wow. Okay. I've never had them. Never ever. No. All right. Bonus content. We're gonna have Ryan sniff smelling salts do on one right. of these post shows. We'll do it. Get the strongest stuff we can find. I'm going know. on Amazon right now. Okay, perfect. We'll just use like those downy crystals to make your laundry smell good. If that if that's all we have. Can we just smell those? Does yeah. that work? Yeah, I'm sure that's fine. Okay. I would just put you back to sleep. I would I would imagine Dawn was just huffing smelling salts into their laundry detergent. That would make sense. <laughs> um, all right. So the, what these cops are actually doing, they're actually prison guards, and they're going to get Lawless. This is the guy's name, played by Jet Li, out of prison. And very important clue that we're in an alternate dimension is they walk by a TV where it shows Al Gore as president yes. as they walk by. They are moving him to some kind of vehicle, and they're going to take him somewhere else. I don't, I don't even remember. It doesn't really matter. No. Just a different jail. It's just a different jail. Their, their remote controls in this, too, they show for the garage have a red light. That's important. Is it? Yeah, because in the other one, it doesn't. Oh. They had a bunch of little touches like that, actually. See, I, mm. I didn't even notice that. As they're as they're taking Wallace out, all the other prisoners are like, yeah, you suck, I hate you, we're going to kill you. And another important clue, he kicks at the bars and like bends three of the bars right. in. Super kick. 
with a super kick. It's so they exactly what it was. <laughs> oh, what Budget cuts. Those? How'd the, that prisoner have a knife that he just chucked at him? And it was stuck like a in the vest. star. Right? I know. Yeah. It was like... Choo. Well, it's an alternate universe, so the bars are made of clay, and the knife <laughs> is just part of what they give out for steak dinners. This is the universe where they never figured out steel. Right. That, that guy kept his prison steak <laughs> dinner knife <laughs> yeah. that day. And, yeah, prison breaks it. are happening constantly. Yeah. Yeah. They've never used their knives like this before. <laughs> <laughs> they used jello for a while. It just didn't work out. <laughs> just that, that definitely didn't work. He invented throwing knives, I think, in that moment right there. No one had ever thought of it. Uh, all right. So he's in the parking lot now, and all of a sudden a shot comes out of a vent, and they shoot up this vent like John McClane's inside of it, right? Like they just like yeah. throw 100 bullets into this thing, and they're like, all right, anything that's in there is not living anymore. But then Arm punches through the vent and continues to shoot and shoots Jet Li's character Lawless in the head and is now dead. Right. Like, that's weird. Main character of the movie is dead. Except when he comes out of the vent, that's also Jet Li. Ah, first clue. Surprise. The, so the, I just want to jump back like two seconds, but the when they're shooting up the vent, the the guy from Breaking Bad. Dean the, Norris. Dean yeah. Norris. The gun he's using like is chewing his pretty teeth off. sweet. Yes. Because it's like fully automatic, yeah. and then it has a lower receiver that is it's like a, got a shotgun. Gun or yeah. Yeah. So he yeah. keeps shooting, and then he'll shoot a shotgun around, rack it, and keep shooting. That was pretty sweet. I like that, that. Those were awesome guns, yes. You can you can buy those. Oh, I know they have them, but yeah. that's they're, a they're real thing. cool, though. <laughs> oh, absolutely. They're sweet. Oh, nice. Um, dude comes out, punches through, and just wastes jet, this other Jet Li. Comes out and just like, wastes everything. No look to him. Just, Yeah. And he's literally, he moves so fast that he punches a guy in the air. That dude's kind of in the air for a minute while he goes over and, like, smacks this guy around yeah. while this dude's still floating, right? Comes over, you know, has a cup of coffee, kicks that yeah. dude in the face before he hits the ground. Swigs his beer, Swigs punts his another beer. guy. Can I just punts say the they guy. were trying too hard to be the Matrix in this yeah. movie? It was it was Matrix 2 vibes. It, they were, yeah, exactly. They were trying to be the Matrix sequel in this movie. The yeah, way he was moving, the dodging the bullets, I thought the, the kicking the, the dude bullets. in the air. <laughs> I thought Just, it was original. The dodging bullets thing, that nobody had ever done that before this movie. Right. He used oh, his wow. gun to deflect one of them, which is kind of <laughs> cool, though. He literally smacked yes. it out of the way. I didn't know yes. he could do that. I like that. That was cool. <laughs> uh, after he wastes everybody, and again, the other Jet Li's already dead, Dean Norris gets used as a meat shield uh, while Let the Bodies Hit the Floor is playing. Yeah, which, right. Let the bodies hit the floor. I, again. They I were, like, so it was literally, really great. Right. It's kind of like an old... It was kind of like an old 80s trope where the song yeah. would say what was what, happening. What's happening in a movie? Let's play a song <laughs> movie, about it. Yep. it. Absolutely. That's exactly what's happening. Have you guys seen Cradle to the Grave with Jet Li? No, I have, this is, I'm is actually... DMX? I'm, it has DMX in okay. it, and that one has a bunch of like, like hard rock in oh, it nice. as well. I was like, I wonder if Jet Li's the one who likes it, or if he just got hooked up with a lot of directors that like it. It could, maybe he's just a huge... Metalhead? Metalhead. He doesn't know how to dance like a metalhead. Oh. No, he doesn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> you ever heard the kids' version of uh, Bodies? There's a kids' version? Uh, kinda. Bonus content. Bottle? <laughs> <laughs> let the bottles hit no, the floor. No, it's let the bodies hit the floor, but it's got like uh, a kids nursery, nursery rhyme music behind it. Oh, we have to do a reaction to that, Oh, James. all right. All right. Fine. We'll do it. It's fine. Um, all right. Jet Li runs out of the building. And is running down the street, and the cops are trying to pursue. And this this killed me. He's like, he's going fifty miles an hour. Cut to him running at a totally normal speed. Yeah, <laughs> down not to the fifty. Road. <laughs> I'm like, can we at least? There was one shot where they gave me like a little zoom effect, but every other twenty five other shots of him running, he was he's just running. normal. Maybe yeah. miles are different in that world. <laughs> in that universe, oh. <laughs> speed works differently. How come his shoes weren't smoking? <laughs> How about every every other that? cartoon where somebody's running 50 miles an hour, their shoes are Listen, smoking. Cap, Captain America, they did really well with Chris Evans where they were able to make him look like he's lapping right. people and yep. running really fast. I remember back in the old Superman movie, he was literally air running like his feet weren't even touching the ground the way they did it. Kind of looks healthy. Yeah. But it still made him look really, really fast. Even And then there's Robert Patrick in Terminator 2 who just trained – for three months as a runner and how to breathe through his nose and literally was catching up to the bike and they had to tell him to slow down. He just was looking like he was running 50 miles an hour. Right. But then Jet Li, I'm like, dude, come on, man. <laughs> come on, dude. He's like, in a, he's like in a light jog. At least furrow your brow. <laughs> At least do that. Uh, we do get here introduced to Jason Statham and Delroy Lindo. We see that there are We'll just call them future cops. They're universe, alternate universe cops. He so, so, so ripped hair. off time cop. You know, Je Jason Statham with hair is cursed, okay? It just <laughs> looks weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's really off-putting. Oh, yeah. 
I, I, I looked I was, like Woody Harrelson. I was uncomfortable. I was like, oh, somebody shave his head. Somebody do something. Give him a bic. <laughs> it's terrible. All right. So uh, he tracks him down. He's got his Nokia flip phone. This is the other thing I thought was funny. Do you have some? Well, yeah, before that. Oh, please. Um, right around eight minutes and 30 seconds, there's a, throughout when they're running and running, there's a, a red car that he's. He like leaps over. Leaps over. Yeah. Um, if you pause it and then look really close, <laughs> um, you can see that it's a stunt man with a blonde wig. Yes, that jawline. <laughs> <laughs> can cut paper. Yes. It's amazing. And honestly, all that guy had to do was like turn his car sideways. Yeah. We need a man in drag for this, please. All right? Don't let anybody else drive it. It's like, I was like, why did we go through that? But he did look like a surprised person. He did. <gasps> I mean, that was a great uh, job Amazing. acting. But yeah. Uh, the thing I was going to say is is Jason's got this flip phone that turns into this big like satellite dish looking cool. thing in his hand. It is cool, but it always makes me laugh that whenever you have a movie that's set in the future from the time that that movie was made, the futuristic technology is always still kind of based in what they had at the yeah. time. That they couldn't foresee what we have now with right. these phones. And so to him, it still on the bottom looks like a Nokia flip phone, but yeah. the top of it is like this big crazy thing. Yeah. And so that just always makes me chuckle. It's like, okay, literally like five years later, this looks ridiculous. Like the Nokia. fax machines in uh, <laughs> Back to the Future 2? Yeah. Right, exactly. Exactly. Just faxes everywhere? They just assume that whatever the new technology is going to be, it's going to be something based off what we already have. Oh, faxes were going to be huge. Now, he had faxes in his closet. <laughs> right. In Back to the Future 2. She's hiding in the closet and she gets a you're fired fax. If you want to fax the show. I'm like, what? what, Good what luck. When is Marty hanging out in the closet at his house and he needs to catch a fax? Well, you never know. And uh, California. Nokia's holding out on us on the wormhole finders back in the day. <laughs> oh, dude. That thing I mean, they, cool. they might have still been selling phones today had they had that out. Yeah. It had the worm app on it. Yeah. You could sit there and right. play that. Or what was it? Snake. Snake. That Snake. Was it. Yeah. yeah, that's Snake. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. I remember that. I think the technology in this reminded me a lot of uh, there's Clock Stoppers, mm. Inspector Gadget, Spy Kids, uh, and then um, Fifth Element. Like, that's the the flavor of technology. Yes. All those other ones probably qualify for the show, but um, <laughs> the technology looks the same. Like yeah. you're just like this is real '90s to two, early 2000s uh, technology. You're just it looks so goofy. Go go gadget right. wormhole. But if and everyone's like... got to stop. They all have the little watch. It yeah. always has oh, to be yeah. a wrist watch that looks so. It's 2000s. just it's just 2001, but just fast forwarded 50 years into the future. But like we never advanced any further than that, right? right. Yeah. Uh, eventually, Je uh, Delroy and Jason Statham catch up in a backyard to Jet Li, the one that killed the other Jet Li, who his name is U Law, we find out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So U Law is now in this backyard. And at the same time, the other cops, who are not future universe cops, come in and they're like, who are these guys holding guns on U Law? And they're telling them to drop their guns. And all the while, they're telling Jet Li to get down. Meanwhile, a wormhole is about to open up. And. They're going back and forth, but before that even happens, and the cops are just kind of standing there, and then eventually they all just start to spasm and break apart into little pieces and all get sucked through a wormhole. Yep. Delroy, Jason, and J Jet Li. And I just, at that point, we leave and cut to the Death Star, wherever they're getting beamed away mm -hmm. to. Yep. Right? But I just imagine, like, I just wanted a reaction of those cops that were standing there in the backyard, just seeing these three guys just get just sucked gets, into a wormhole. Yeah, like, and just cut back to them, like, uh, you know what it is? <laughs> it's called 10 8 no paper. <laughs> what does that mean? That means they walk away and don't have to do a report. Okay, perfect. They're 10 just 8 like, no paper. They're just like, huh, oh, that was weird. That was super weird. Yeah. Did you <laughs> see that? Didn't see nothing. <laughs> Anywho. Honestly. Uh, all right, so they get sucked up to this, what looks like a starship or some kind of you know futuristic base. Dude was dressed like an Imperial officer. Yeah, he yeah. was. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Was he right? Yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, okay, I wasn't yeah. going crazy. Yeah. Uh, and so, and I'm, I, when I got there, I'm like, oh, cool, Jason can get a haircut because they're back at base or wherever they're at <laughs> there. But like, while we're here, somebody shave his head. He's been out on the field a long time. <laughs> like they've been, they've been ragging on him to get his hair cut. Like you're out of, you're out of oh. uh, spec there, soldier. You gotta uh, get your hair cut. Uh, you, you've seen Jason Statham movies. I have. D did it bother you, the hair? Uh, no. Not really? No. I was just focused on the, I don't know. It's I just know. so short and spiky in the middle. And I'm just like, just 
That might have been hair fashion. I don't remember. Just take it out. In 2001, I half know. of it missing. Half yeah. of it's not there. It There's a reason though. he shaves. But when you shave your head, it is interesting how that suddenly converts into a, a, a bad. Being like more tough. Bad arse. Yeah, right. Yeah. He's much more of a bad arse. <laughs> <laughs> we just say that. He prefers forever. naughty boy. He prefers right, right. <laughs> Speaking of hair, I very much enjoyed the Jet Li wig showcase, which is what happens right now. That's, yeah, <laughs> and right about now. twelve minutes in. They've, now they've got him, you know, prisoner here, and they're they're going through. You have killed 123 versions of yourself, and they only went through and the last here it six. Is. Here's Billy Law and Johnny Law and Michael Law. And I, and you know Stuart Law or whatever and Law. <laughs> there was like Baja Law who who was gonna do. Uh, he had dreads and he yep. looked like he was he wanted the Punani or something. He was gonna, he was gonna be on Seagal's uh, reggae album. <laughs> right, yeah, with right. him. <laughs> the one had like the straight stoner hair. Yeah. Emo, here's emo law. <laughs> did, they, did they not think I, this had to have been played for laughs, right? Did they not think yeah. when they showed this, people are going to be like, this is ridiculous? It had to have been. I also <laughs> wondered if they were going to, for laughs, have when the three of them, you know, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Mike TV'd <laughs> into their, you know, have like their shoes switched or something like that. Right, something. But they didn't. They didn't. Put back together wrong. Yeah. Now he's got Jet Li's feet. <laughs> I was wondering, I because I was waiting for them to react and have one, like Jet Li be in a different body or something. Right. And well, just no, like, oh, look, look for the bad acting. No, not only that, get... they're, they're out there rolling on the ground after they get out of this wormhole too, like. Yeah. And they're all just standing while I'm watching. What's going on? Well, it it probably didn't feel good. No. Which one's this? Which one did he kill? Was it Stoner Lee or Broner Lee or... Don't do it. <laughs> Quebec Lee? <laughs> uh, all right. U-Law only needs one more person. We find out there's one more Jet Lee out there. And Delroy, the future cop, was like... You kind of get the sense that there was a past between the two of them. Yeah. Like, you're not, I was there when you did the first. And you're not getting none of that. Last one's not happening. He says, we no. used to be brothers. Right. I know we dropped the ball 123 times, but <laughs> this time we're not losing. <laughs> At what point do you feel like you're going to stop him when you've been trying to stop him 123 times? Or you need times? backup. Or, or add a third agent. Yeah. Right? I, I think I got this. <laughs> I think I got it under or control. Or like a space cat. I don't know. Just some <laughs> helper. Something. Around like number 78, right. they're like, Jason yep. Statham's going to go with you and you can't yeah. say no. Right. Get rocket in there. That will attack. <laughs> What is he, Beastmaster now? Yes. He's going to have a, a tiger yep. Yep. and a hawk and a ferret and yep. two ferrets. Oh, man, that'd be great. <laughs> I mean, if, if it was Danny Glover, he could have just said he's getting too old for this. Oh, one. you're right. That would have been even better. You have, a you have a third partner, a fourth partner. Maybe they've all just died. I mean, that's also a possible. Here's the other thing. They say he's killed 123 people. He's killed way more than 123 people. Oh, yeah. Those are just the versions of himself. Yeah. yeah. But he's only on trial. For 123 counts of murder. They're acting like all the other deaths just don't matter. They're just like, who cares about those people? Well, Extras? Those were cops. But he, we don't care. He, well, he was a multiverse <laughs> agent, though. Yeah. That's Jet but, Li's character that's yeah. going through the wormholes. He was actually a multiverse. He was a former agent. multiverse well, cop yeah, right. with Delroy. That's how yes. they were knew each other. But right. he killed all the, the cops and stuff that were... That were guarding, guarding Lawless. Yeah, Lawless. And he kills other people throughout the movie. Yeah, those don't matter. There. Collateral damage. I'm so confused already. <laughs> All right. So uh, U-Law, this is bad. Remember, U-Law is bad Jet Li. What if okay. we just call him Et Li and Jet Li for good and bad? No, Et Li and Jet Li is going to be even Get more Lee. confusing. It's U-Law and Gabe. And Gabe. Gabe. Gabe is the one other Jet Li that's left. Okay. There's Gaby. 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 Gaby and A.B. <laughs> Gabe. <laughs> He's born that way. <laughs> there's Gabe Li. And there's you law, okay? All right. My gosh, if this is confusing, it's because it is. Well, now, I'm so confused already. <laughs> they take you law and they put him in a chair. And I thought like capital punishment is what was about to happen, right? Like they were, yeah, fry him. But they would have been not, better off. They're gonna shoot him to the Hades universe, which is like, okay, you're sending him to hell, basically. It's like where Riddick lives in this prison, you know, planet. So kind of looks like Cleveland. And <laughs> as he's sitting in this chair, and they're listing off his offenses. Uh, Carla Gugino shows up, which I'm never sad to see. I have been a fan of hers for a long... You guys ever seen her in anything else? Like uh, The Haunting of Hill House they did on Netflix? She's all over. I haven't She's seen so that. Much. Tons of stuff. Yeah. What else is uh, she in? Gerald's Game. She did oh, recently. I didn't see that one. Oh, come on. All right, go look at her filmography. She's been in tons and tons I did, of stuff. looking for something all I recognize I know is that from, when she but... walked... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. All I know is that when she walked in, I was watching with my wife, and Lauren just goes, why does she got to push her butt out to sit down? 
Because she's like walking up, and the camera's it's like, important for "Let's the plot. angle the, this." The same, the same reason there's <laughs> Where the overhead. Where did she get that rat? <laughs> there's the same same reason there was the overhead shot of her walking in with the low cut shirt. Yeah, that, that's a good point. That and then necessary. the leg part as well. No one exactly. else's leg, just her. There's just plot <laughs> reasons. Yeah. Okay. Right. She was and super the, hard to see in that pink outfit. No one would have noted. They're noticed building she, up to something. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. No, we're getting there. Hold on. So she shows up while they're prepping to send him to hell. And he's talking about, I'm getting stronger and blah, 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 blah. And out of nowhere, the one, the biggest WTF moment, and <laughs> she just lets a mouse out of her yeah. shoe. Well, that's sure. before she did like the opening legs. You thought you were going to get a shot there or that. Something was going to happen with that. <laughs> Why did you think that was- it's not an R-rated movie. I think I downloaded well, the wrong I know, movie. But I'm like, all right, what's going you on we were here? Watching Basic Instinct. Well, it had, exactly. Okay. It had no, PG-13. It was, and then it was like, oh, here the comes the mouse. Mouse in the shoe technique. Right. Can I just? I've say, seen it once. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead I was just gonna say it had the PG-13 anticipation. That's what it was. They, that's they knew who the that's audience what it was. was. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Uh, can I? Can I just ahead. say yes. this rat or mouse or whatever? They shoved that wire that's sticking out of it up his butt or something. It had like an yeah. antenna tied around his balls. And he had yeah. the biggest set of balls I've ever that's seen on a mouse. Saying. <laughs> it, was, like, it was a rat. It wasn't a mouse. It was a rat. Getting choked yeah. out by this antenna that poor wire. Rat, dude. Well, that's because there was like a small soldier or something. They were going to use it for like bull riding or something. So they tied its balls off with <laughs> a little wire. I felt terrible for this poor mouse. First of all, so she's got a giant high heel. Think of like the ones you might see um Hot topic. Uh, at hot topic, right? Where there's like <laughs> fish, like goldfish yeah, you put swimming your around. Fish like in it. the 40 year version, yes. Yes. right? When they were selling it at the yes. eBay yeah. store. At the eBay store. Oh. One of those big old heels, and she opens the heel of it, and there's a compartment. But I I would have imagined she opened that up, and the mouse it was would have just been passed out. And or just, just threw just up. Dead. Over <laughs> or just threw up. <laughs> but the question is, what if it just came out and just sat down and didn't leave her? And was really tired. Yeah, and just chilled out. Or, or it had choked on its own fumes. Sure. I imagine it would be dead when you opened that shoe. Yeah. But instead, it's a bomb. And so it crawls up to the window. It's trained to go there, I'm assuming. To the window, it's like, think of it like a lethal injection center where there's like an audience room yep. that's it's separated by glass where he's sitting behind the thing. And uh, the guy says to Jet Li, are you ready? And he goes, are you? Cut to Carla flipping the middle finger. And at that point, you hear, ooh, wah, ah, and yep. boom. And the freaking thing explodes and frees Jet Li. And we get down with the sickness plan. And I'm like, at the, I'm simultaneously confused <laughs> and also really happy that down with the sickness. Yeah, is exactly. <laughs> Loving it. <laughs> right. I mean? I'm like, why is this blowing up? I don't care because disturbed is right. playing. Oh. I don't know what's happening, but I love it. I know. <laughs> I liked the music, but I also felt like it didn't match up perfectly. No. Right? It, it was, it was a little saying, off. It was you, out of place, and I was confused by it, but I still was happy. You like it? Here. You felt like it should be describing what was actually going on in the scene. Yeah. Is that it? Get up, get up, get that rat. All right, exploding. so if we try to make this work, like bodies hit the floor, somebody was getting down with sickness. I don't know. So rounding deep. Carla is the wife slash girlfriend slash paramour, whatever. In if, every in universe. every world, wouldn't yeah. they? Wouldn't someone have figured it out and known? Like, oh, the lady in bright, bright pink probably has something to do with him. Yeah. Don't well, let her in. They, they would have known that they up. were together. She for wore sure. green in the other universe, though, so that's oh. what threw them off. Gosh. Oh gosh. Yeah. All right. Whatever. Thanks. Thanks so much. Um, so he he wormholes out of there to Gabe's universe, which is the last Jet Li standing. Okay. Yep. And so now we're there, and that, and when we see the baseball cops getting ready again to get another guy out, it's like the same scene playing over. But the clue that you know it's different is that now George Bush, George W. Bush, is the president on the thing. Talking and, about universal health care. Right. Like it was a big joke that they would do that, but then like nine years later they actually did. But still, regardless, this time though Jet Li is one of the guards getting some other guy out of prison and not the guy himself. Same scenario plays out. They go out into the parking lot, the same vent and the above the same parking lot. Shots come out, they shoot it up, and it, I'm like, did he kill all 123 guys from the same vent? Is this his just go-to move? <laughs> and by then, shouldn't he just wrap himself in some steel or something, something. so that he can't get possibly shot? Because it's suddenly very, it's much less impressive he's done this 123 times. He just found a spot to camp that works really well that they can't get him, and right. then he just knocks off all of these guys as they come out of the jail. I want to see the scene where he shows up and they don't have duct work in that universe. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
And That's he's like, it. oh, crap. The map changed. Now he's hiding inside of a traffic cone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with <laughs> eyes cut him. out, <laughs> just two little eyes. Yes, exactly. And he punches through it with his arm. <laughs> and lips painted on it. You don't need it, but just for fun. <laughs> for, just for fun. Yep. At that point, he's got to make it fun. He's done it 123 times. Probably <laughs> bored out of his mind yeah. doing this. All right, they fire at the vent again. He, what, what episode number is this? <laughs> 130 something. Oh, yeah. It's, know how uh, he feels. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. We've done about as many as he has. Uh, they fire at the vent. He, he he's camping there. Uh, I have questions because as he comes out of the vent again this time, this time he comes out because he gets knocked out by by a truck that the that Gabe is driving. But he comes out and some of these guys are shooting. He's running away and he's they're shooting right behind him. And he's not dodging at all. And so part of me is confused saying, okay, is U-Law bulletproof or or what's happening? Or is it just, is it just poor angling and poor staging? He's a matrix kind of guy. Yeah. Because there's sometimes where he's actively dodging yeah. Yeah. and it makes sense. And there's sometimes where he's just walking past people that are just plainly shooting at him and nothing happens. These were just plain clothes stormtroopers. <laughs> right. From a foot away. Yeah. Remember the A-team? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but the bullet would have to come out of the gun and go this way. Talk yeah. about some Kentucky windage on these things. Well, they're, yeah, they're not playing the wind real well, I guess, then, with that. Oh, my God. And they busted open the vent, so you've got all that extra breeze coming through. I that's mean, it affects a bullet. It affects a bullet. Yeah. All right, that's fair. They chase Eula outside, and he one-hops a wall. With the barbed wire? The razor wire. It's the most rubber-looking barbed wire <laughs> I've ever seen. Yes. You just like blowing it. It's so fake looking. Yeah, it's yeah, like that a was fifteen foot wall though, right? Because he well, he one hops a fifteen foot wall. That's impressive. impressive. All right, yeah. Carl Lewis would be jealous. But then the <laughs> I don't other think he high jumped. The he probably did. Oh, well. for fun, not in the Olympics. And then when Gabe runs over, <laughs> you guys want to come over on Saturday and high jump? <laughs> got a fifteen foot wall with razor wire. I'll bring tacos. We start to get the sense that Gabe is also almost as strong as. Yes, you law almost because he can kind of get to the top, but then has to crawl over razor wire, which should be tearing him to shreds. But yeah, it's just like boing, 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 like all rubber. Yeah, he should have been shredded, getting caught in its, getting it caught in his vest and everything else. That's like the best yeah, nap to lay on it and sleep. Yeah. So I got a question. Yeah. So if if there's only two left, they're spreading the power. Yeah. Between the two of them, they're equally. You'd think, but it looks so like it's 60 40. But yeah. it shouldn't, it, it looks like it's like 70 30 or 80 20. They even it said be. it's all, he's almost. I don't know why, but that's what they they're but right. There's no reason, equal. there's no he's reason he like shouldn't day. be equal. Right. You're right. But maybe it's because the other Gabe didn't kill a bunch of dudes. I, he didn't kill a bunch of other Gabe. It doesn't seem to matter, but they should have explained that somehow. I, I don't know. But regardless, with the razor wire stuff, it's all fine if you just need a shot of some razor wire, it looks fine. But if you're going to have a character crawl through it, you can't just leave the rubber stuff up there. Come on, guys. It's a $50 million budget. Do do a little bit better. Well, they did have to pay eight Jet Lees. Yeah. Uh, right as as the other Jet Lee makes it over the wall, he's now face-to-face -face with himself, and he says, well, the good news is you're not crazy is what you law says to him. Right then, he's about to get killed, but the future cops, Jason Statham, Delroy, show up, chase him off, right? And so Gabe is spared. Gabe gets home, and he's with another version of Carla Gugino, whose name is TK, and tells her that this, I, what, she's like, what happened? You took one in the vest. She's like, oh, the guy looked like me. He's trying to explain it to her. She goes, maybe this has something to do with what's been happening to you. People get older. They don't get stronger and faster, Gabe. Let's go get an MRI or a, a CAT scan, maybe. <laughs> you know, Scan your cat. Scan your cat. And so they go into the hospital, and they're... All the other cops are there that like were part of that shootout with Eula. Hey, Gabe, you okay? You know, we kind of see these buddy buddy with these other cops, and he gets along good with them, which is important for later. Before the MRI, the nurse is walking him over to the MRI room, and she starts asking him all kinds of questions. I've never had an MRI. I, is it normal for them to ask if you had a penile implant before you get an MRI? Yeah, they ask about piercings and stuff like that. Okay. Because it'll literally rip the metal right out of you because it's a giant magnet. Got it. Definitely okay. don't want a Prince Albert. You definitely <laughs> want to make sure that you don't have that when you go. Because maybe I thought of, well, if this is, I was like, this isn't a Steven Seagal movie, but you know, if this right. had been a Seagal movie and they asked him that. The nurse would have been like, oh, I could be so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> make sure you put in the line about the penile implant and how I don't have one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just want everybody to know. Remember the, in Hard to Kill, they literally there's a whole scene. He's in a coma for seven years, and they and he wrote a scene in the movie where she lifts up the sheet just to go. Please wake wow. up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Please wake. I'm like, that's oh, impressive. Stephen, 
<laughs> ridiculous, buddy. All right. At this point, when they're <clears throat> combining their necklaces, which was a bit much, um, <laughs> Jim, yes. my husband, just looks at them and goes, zero chemistry. Absolutely none, right? None. Do you yeah. agree with your husband? Totally. None. Yeah. Totally none. I didn't buy them for a second. Not a second. Nothing against either of them or right. both talented people, yeah. but just together, big fat no. Right. Yeah, either, he, all he's doing is getting an MRI, and he's got a necklace, which we don't know they go together until he takes it off, puts it over her, combines it with her necklace. <gasps> having a moment. We I do it. love that the nurse was like, for Christ's sake, you're getting an MRI. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she was the one. Maybe. She, yeah, all of her versions clearly had died. <sighs> all right. Uh, he feels the presence of himself. He's about to get in the MRI. He's like, there's something where I can feel him again. He's somewhere in this hospital. I feel myself. What? What? <laughs> like he was really feeling himself? No. Like he Not in the born. MRI, sir. I can mean that too. He was really uh, feeling himself. Mm. Sir, the gown goes the other way. <laughs> <laughs> Eula comes in while he's in the MRI machine and gets the drop on the MRI tech. And, but again, the future cops show up before the tech gets shot. And it turns into this whole big shootout in the MRI room. And I loved how Jason Statham just knocks the tech unconscious yep. when he's yeah. clawing. Oh, 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 right. and just goes, shut up. Yeah. Just knocks him out. Yeah. He could have ruined everything. Right. He could have. But I thought it was a pretty good, pretty good shootout. Yeah. I didn't know that they had fog machines inside of MRIs. Yeah, what happened there? Yeah. It exploded. Like he, and they have a reverse button where they'll shoot you through. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. It's turbo mode. I just said, yeah. okay. There's a dry yeah, the, ice setting. <laughs> M- magnets typically, once you shoot, pierce them, just start spraying fog all over the place. They're filled with... With, with uh, brain fog. <laughs> yeah. I get it now. They're filled with steam. It's what they've extracted right. from all the other people. Yes. how they magnetize right. them. <laughs> That's everybody's thoughts now filling Surprise, the air. I didn't know that. Uh, Perfect. Right. I know you probably have to... You Mind wanders all kinds of ways when you're sitting there for 10 minutes in a giant tube. Not moving. Yeah. Not moving. Right. right. All kinds of weird thoughts in the air. Uh, like um, about multiverses. <laughs> this is right. And which one of them? That's I how in? the guy probably thought up this movie. was sitting <laughs> in an MRI machine. I don't think what I if, could sit still for five minutes like that. He's like, what if there was another me that from another universe, but if he came to kill me, he'd get stronger. Get me out of this tube. I gotta what go if, write a movie. I gotta write a hit. What, what if in the other universe... <laughs> I need the, ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. What Mark. if in the other universe, the MRIs had steam? <laughs> They were steam operated, like from the 1800s. Steampunk. Steam operated. <laughs> Let's get that uh, MRI machine from Wild Wild West in here. Let's go. <laughs> like the ice machine Doc Brown made in <laughs> <You're right>. the <laughs> Old West. All right. So while this is all happening, there's a shootout. Gabe's colleagues, the other cops on a couple floors down, think that it's Gabe shooting up the place because all of the monitors and the cameras are showing him at the exact worst possible moments. And they all conveniently look away at all the times it would have exonerated him right. Right. or shown that there was another one of them. I mean, you notice just, how the camera swing, they're like, pitch the camera over, and it flies over the first time. And they're like, right. now look back the other way. And it goes super uh, slow, uh, as slow as it can to miss him. Yeah, I get tired when I do a lot of work after <laughs> it, you know, long day. That's right. These cameras, are sentient cameras in this universe. Right. Yeah, the camera's like, this right. is the most I've ever worked. The camera's just sitting there. Yeah. So to wrap things up, though, yeah. <laughs> think about this. Uh, later, so they're going to collect that security camera footage for the investigation. You'd imagine. So somebody watching that later is going to go, oh. Yeah, but that never happens. Well, they don't show it. Right. At least not in that universe. Or it's just they watch it and it's another 10-8, no paperwork. Right. There you right. go. <laughs> it seems to be a thing. I didn't know about it. There actually was no VHS cassette in the recording no. probably that day. That's probably oh. what it was. Yeah. Uh, Gabe runs into the hallway where his wife and the other friends, cops of his, are in the hallway, and they're all like, Gabe, just just settle down, man. It's going to be okay. And he ends up just handcuffing them all to the same chair. I thought that was hilarious. Pretty he pulls awesome. a Jackie and Chan. Really awesome. yeah. Major, I don't want yeah. no trouble. I don't want no trouble. <laughs> right. Handcuffs them all and gets out of there. And so the future cops, Delroy and Jason, uh, decide that they're going to split up, right? Jason Statham gets Gabe. And Delroy says, I'm going to go get you, love. They've got the history or whatever. And flashes this bomb that sinks to Jason Statham's watch and says, when you see this go red, you know that me and you, law are dead. I'm just going to sacrifice myself to take him out. And at that point, you have to kill Gabe because there cannot be – it'll destroy the – there's like – again, they don't really ever explain it, but they mention a few times that if there's ever just one left, it could destroy the whole universe – but that doesn't track because I don't know. if it's going to destroy the universe, it's going to be too late for him to kill the uh, Gabe. That's what I'm saying. 
So kill them at the exact same time? I don't know. Sink your watches. Whatever. But that's just, that's, I'm just explaining what they're saying is going to happen, right? Yeah. That doesn't um, sound like a good idea. No, it doesn't, does it? I, the more I think about it, that's pretty dumb. It's super dumb. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, glo- I glossed Jay. over that. Mel figured out the movie. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, this is super dumb. I figured it out. Wait a minute. <laughs> I think it's dumb. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> um, all right. So they, like I said, they split up and they each are going to get one. And I think these future cops must have some kind of like extra sensory perception or something or technology helping them because Jason follows after an ambulance that Gabe got into completely out of sight of Jason Statham, but knows that he's in there and follows it. Then Eula is driving and escaping away in a coroner's van, and Delroy is just in it. And it's like already we're halfway into the movie, and it's already like the fourth time that he's just been there wherever he needs to be at the exact right moment for no reason whatsoever. I have a theory. Yes. I think that Del- what's Eula? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Eula goes and does all this stuff in every single one of these 125 universes, and so he's already done this and he hasn't caught on that the cop knows where he's going to be that is the best explanation probably that i could think of because otherwise why would he just always show up at the exact right moment he's just in this coroner's van and and jason just knew to follow the ambulance and all that stuff we just need a scene of him being like i'm gonna go get some nachos because he's not gonna be over here for another five he's not taking that coroner's van for- is jason statham the one. Maybe he's the only Jason Statham left. The one with a bad haircut, maybe. All the all the bald headed ones are gone. <laughs> <laughs> the wanna, dreadlock one's I still around. <laughs> Please let yeah, that be it's true. Just, yeah, it's just between the <laughs> multiverse Jason Statham and Rasta Jason Statham. If you're the police agency <laughs> for the multiverse, you got to have some sort of way to track people. Something. You know, just somehow he's he's got to know he's got to have like some sort of homing device or, or you know, or they have none of that because they've failed to stop him 123 times. You know wow. what they have? Yeah. They've got a wire that they wrap around his balls. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only move that works, and he used it against them. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, Jason follows Gabe to a train station, and Gabe just literally kicks some exposition right out of his chest. Um, he, he comes around the corner, almost nails Statham over a, over a railing and holds him there until he gives all the exposition to Gabe to explain to him why he's in this movie and what's happening. He literally tells him the whole thing. Were you guys confused about this shot? Because it had like the geometric uh, drawing on the floor and I didn't realize that it was below, like mm-hmm. there was a hang overhang. Gotcha. I was really confused when he started falling. I was like... Wait, there's a floor? Yeah, it's probably how you look at it. I mean, I I thought there was an overhang, but okay. I guess if you, I'm sure if you look at it a certain way, it might look like it, there's not, but yeah. Okay. It, it was it was a very abrupt scene, and it happened very, very fast. And it's really the whole purpose of it is just so Gabe can be filled in on the first half of the movie, right? Pretty and much. Now Gabe knows yep. what's going on, that there's another guy from the universe trying to kill him, and he's going to be the one, and that's why you're getting super powerful, that's why you're stronger, all that. It's like this whole scene with Jason following him through this train station is just to give him exposition. It's pretty much my morning. Yeah. yeah. He goes, <laughs> there's a guy after you. He's fr- he's another you. And if uh, somebody kills him, we have to kill you. This is how it works. Everybody got that? That's literally. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. <laughs> it's literally what happens in this scene. Now, uh, Eula, while he's driving the the, uh, the coroner's van, Eula and Delroy are starting to kind of have a conversation and wax on about what would happen if you were successful. Gosh, you wonder what would happen. They, some people say the universe would be destroyed. And he says, you know, you know what I think would happen? I become a god. I think that's the version that happens. And they're waxing philosophical. And then Eula crashes the van and goes around the back. But Delroy Sandra Bullock's him with the fire extinguisher. Yep. yep. Okay. He's got it hidden behind his it's back. Got, that's right. Before he gets kicked out of his own jacket, Jet Li kicks him straight out of his clothes. You wouldn't Rips have his jacket a sternum head. anymore, dude. Like, <laughs> what I'm saying. That would kill you. Right. Nicole, if I grabbed on one of each of your sleeves and sure. kicked you in the sternum hard enough to split your shirt. And break my xiphoid process. <laughs> you love it every I chance do. you get. <laughs> I don't. I think you're already dead at that point. Yes. Right? If it's a leather coat, it especially. It absolutely kicks yeah. you out of a leather coat. But I it mean, came from a different dimension or whatever, true. so maybe. What if he got it at Aldi? 
Yeah, if it's yeah. an Aldi, that's a great uh, point. I mean, it could yeah. be a really like, good jacket. But Aldi, I don't know. Aldi's okay. I would say more like if you got it from Walmart. Yeah. Five below. Yes. Five yeah. below. Oh, there, oh, there, there you go. go. Harbor Freight. If it's a Har- it ca- his <laughs> no, Harbor came Freight, off. that nobody's kicking anybody out of a Harbor then Freight Then the sleeves coat. just would have come off. That's right. Saying. He just would have grabbed the sleeves would have came off. It's and a I mean, a win- it's a windbreaker. It breaks <laughs> with the wind. <laughs> Seriously. And before Delroy can pull out his little green bomb nugget thing that he has in his pocket. I thought that bomb was, I well. Okay. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I know what you thought and don't even need to say it. Now, it's flashing green, but what was that? Oh, was that your phone vibrating? No. Was it really? No. It what was, was the that egg. noise? It was the egg. What egg? His the little bomb. nugget. Oh. I, th- I literally thought something <laughs> happened in the room. That's why I was like, Mel. what made that noise? <laughs> All right. We're good? It was Mel. I think we're good. Okay, you made you made that noise. Yeah. Oh, my God. I thought I was like, what happened? Something happened You look here. so startled. I was. <laughs> All right. Before he – now, Yulaw knows what this bomb is because he used to be a future cop. And so he is fast enough to be able to get to him from 10 feet away before he can push the button to detonate it. And he's able to choke out and kill Delroy – and stop the bomb from going off, and now he has a bomb. Mm-hmm. So do you think that it's the same theory as, like, if you're 21 steps away from somebody? Yeah, then with it's the like, knife. But there's, like, a bomb well, thing for that? And with that little bomb, too, he opened it up and did something, pulled something out or whatever that made it flash red and made yeah. Jason Statham's watch flash red. Yulaw knew enough to make it look like the bomb went off. Yep. Jason would think that both of them were dead. But he's not now. He has a working bomb. Right. It would have been great if it was just a push button where it's right. just like, do you want them to think it's blown up? Oh, yeah. Push here. Menu come up. <laughs> <laughs> Hit enter to continue. Wait, it's like an, an eye touch. I can't right. get it. I'm sorry. It sounded like you said detonate bomb. Is that right? <laughs> no. <laughs> please, please confirm. <laughs> Press one. I don't want to listen to Clearwater. <laughs> I can't even talk anymore. Damn it, Alexa. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, after seeing his watch turn red, Jason thinks that Gabe is now the one, the only one left. And so he raises his gun like he's going to kill him, but ultimately decides not to for no reason that's been established yet at all. And says, you know, I'm here for you, Gabe. You know, I'm not actually going to kill you. I'm here to help you. That made no sense Zero. whatsoever. No, they didn't earn that no. moment at yeah. all. Not Maybe at it's because right. the universe didn't implode on itself at that point. He changed his mind. <laughs> He's Maybe questioning it. I don't. Yeah. He's like, whoo, whoo. seems fine. There's another. There's a scene that gets inserted here that has nothing to do with anything else because the next thing that happens all happens at Gabe's house, right? Yeah, where he obviously should not have gone. No. By the way, <laughs> no. she's like, "Go home," and he's like, "Okay." That's right. As he should have said, as he was handcuffing his buddies in the hospital, his wife said, "Get home," like whispers it to him or right. whatever. Like they're it. Like that's where they're all going to be. They're not right. going to look for but, you at home. But that's really the next thing that's happening. But in between what happens with him killing Delroy and the stuff at Gabe's house, there's this just random scene of Eula smashing a bunch of cops with two motorcycles. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah he sandwiched one between the motorcycles. He smacked one into he picks next one week up, with another. Like he's the Incredible Hulk or yeah. something. And he's right. swinging it around like a Louisville and yeah. just batting these dudes around. Well, he was a baseball <laughs> cop at one point. He was. True. Thank you. Thank you. Just He just... Poof, 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 poof. Getting smacked around by motorcycles. Yeah, he's pretending Definitely he's like looked- the monkey with the symbols, and he's just got a cop between two motorcycles. Which seemed like <laughs> inefficient use of energy. Yeah. Why bother? Why I, not just punch I mean, it was them? Fun. In, just break their trachea. It'd be a lot you easier. Have places to be. Right? Yeah, but you got two motorcycles though to, that you can pick up. Like right. they're now he's just, just playing toys. around. Right. I mean, and he's just showing off. But he at could this just point. like Grand Theft Auto drive around. It was only a dollar forty-eight for gas per the sign that I saw. That's true. So just go joyride. Just do it. That's fair. It um, looked real fake. It looked real fake. And I'm not yeah. one to want to harp on CGI because it's the product of the time. But if you can't do it to a certain level, don't, some of the shots of the motorcycles looked okay. But there was the one where he picked up both or I'm like, that yeah, should have just No, that's gone. not yeah. happening, right? Well, yeah. and like like we said, uh, Matrix was two years before. Right. And that's yep. way oh, better. Gosh, oh. if you want to hold this against the Matrix, this looks like 
dog crap. That's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, visually. It doesn't make any sense. It looked like it was made in 1996, like right. the year after the net or something. Yeah, right. this, they, they uh, put this on the heels of Escape from L.A. This looked like a 90s yeah. movie. Yeah. For sure. This looked like a 90s movie. Yeah, it would have been in the same vein as uh, Escape from L.A. for sure. Yeah, absolutely. All right, back at Gabe's house, TK is just getting back with Bobby is kind of the main cop that's with her, um, escorting her, and there are cops crawling all over searching the house. And she wants to get away with him. And so she uses the man's ultimate weakness, <laughs> the only thing that will always work in any scenario. Nicole, you know this is true. I got to go do my girl stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't understand, you fascist. She should have just, like, hit garbage cans and things and, like, just <laughs> make crazy for fun. And you don't know what we do in here. <laughs> he immediately is like, oh, oh, well. He's like, absolutely not. You can't go anywhere. I have to do my girl stuff. All right, let's go. Yep. We're going to all leave the house right gotta now. Gotta leave messages on all the right. windows and, and the mirrors. <laughs> I got to do all that. Right. She goes upstairs. He does come up with her up into the upstairs, into the into the bedroom, and uh, lets her up in there. But then she does say, uh, privacy. Yeah, girl stuff. Right? And so he's like, oh, oh, gosh, yeah, I'm sorry. And he steps out. And now she's trying to find him, because I think she thinks Jet Li's in the room somewhere, yeah. hiding, whatever. And she almost knocks over a lamp yeah. and all that. But And she was all worried. I'm like, uh, you, like you're saying, you make any noise you want. You just have to shout out things that... I'm shaving my armpits. Don't come yeah, in here. Just right. like jackhammer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, yeah, right. Just just keep shouting. It's girl stuff. You wouldn't get it. You wouldn't know. I just start singing, how lovely to be a woman. <laughs> and he's just out there going, oh, man, this is the worst. It's just, yeah. Estrogen, am I yeah. right? <laughs> Um, she deduces that Gabe has made it into the attic because there's some stuff on the floor and she looks up, there's the opening into the attic and uh, she opens it up and there his face appears and Gabe says to her I told you it's not wasted space, this is the first thing he says when she opens it and it just freaking made me laugh because this this version knew that across space and time the one consistent thing about this woman is that she complains about the attic and then she would have said it <laughs> It's almost like lying to the audience because right. it makes you assume that they did have a prior connection and it was the right one. Right. So it's not like you end up feeling a little bit dumb like for falling for it because right. they set you up to be an idiot. Right, because she thinks it's gay, but we find out it's actually you law up there. But the fact that he knew that would work no matter what version yeah. of her that yeah. it is yeah. is kind of hilarious. And I find it hard to believe that guy would be able to say, I'm scared. Like, I don't think he can. <laughs> no, no. Like, get that puppy that dog eye going. It. Yeah. No. Well, the other thing, too, is the dog is growling, and so that throws you. So they did a lot to set up yeah. to be like, yeah. we're going to make sure the audience won't guess this at all. Yeah. No. And and also, why would she hmm. Why would she think it was the attic is wasted space? Like, what did she want to do? Fill it with concrete? Like, like I, I don't understand High that. High ceilings. That, that whole argument. She wanted High to ceilings. vault the she ceilings? She wanted the vaulted ceilings. Is that what it yeah. was? Maybe he wanted a man cave. She wanted to seal it off, I thought. You know, or leave it open for really good acoustics <laughs> when you're in the shower. <laughs> a man cave up in the for yard. yeah when you're good. when she's doing her woman for her, stuff. Her woman stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, I, more space for her to do woman stuff. Yeah, right. Mind your business, Bobby. I'm still in here talking to my ceiling. I'm vaulting my ceiling. I'm a girl. You don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> it's hormones, okay? okay? Uh, Gabe, well. Evil Gabe, we, we don't know that yet. Asks because I need a weapon. So I she, knew it. This was the you worst. Knew immediately? I knew immediately oh. it was. I didn't. I'll say I, I bought it. I didn't buy it for like, one second. I was like, get the man a weapon, woman. Yeah, no, I knew it was him. <laughs> okay, that was you, Law. I didn't. I didn't really shout that. But how did he know? I told you to get my gun. Yeah, that's the other oh, thing yeah. that didn't work either. It did, no, no, oh. no. Yeah, You're I'm throwing right. a flag. You're right. Throw a, throw a penalty flag on that one. We need, Gosh, a whist, we need a whistle. That. I have whistles. We, we got to get a whistle. Right. Flag on the play. I'll bring, <laughs> I got mm -hmm. flags, too. We'll just start throw, chucking yep. penalty flags. We'll, we'll, add it. we'll add it later um, in post. Throw the, the red flag. <laughs> Let's go back to the replay. <laughs> she does uh, find a gun in a drawer, and right then she sees another Jet Li in her backyard. I'm like, there's Jet Li's everywhere. But So right before she hands the gun to him, she's like, I'm going to test him to see if this is the right Jet Li. The bookstore question. Right? She says... Remember that time that we met in the bookstore? Do you ever think we'd be here? And he says, even if I had known, I still would have come in. Wrong answer, because they met at the veterinarian's office, 
not at the bookstore. And he says, look, I'm fast enough to get that gun and kill you before you could pull the trigger and everybody else in the house. Right. And sure enough, it, he does get out of the attic and to the gun before she's able to pull the trigger and shoot him. You ever tried to get out of an attic? Dude, I know. Yeah, and Without he, the stairs? Oh. Uh, I mean, even, even with a ladder, it just, it's a big production. Yeah, he did it at normal speed, too. It's yeah. not like he did it real fast anyone, or anything. No. Is anyone else terrified to go in their attic? You're like, I don't know what's up there. <laughs> I, dude, I wouldn't go There's in my attic. There's a Demogorgon unless, up there. I absolutely <laughs> had to, because that's where the monsters live. Yes. Okay? It's the worst. I so, don't let my foot hang off the bed anymore, even. Okay? You guys, are you all crazy people and will just let your foot yeah, hang off the bed? Yeah, because... Or? That's how things can grab it. <laughs> that's that's where the monsters are. Okay. No, it's because well, maybe it's the monsters blanket. blowing on my foot <laughs> to keep me cool me. then, because that's what I do. <laughs> to be that's fair, why. James lives in a haunted house. I do from like the eighteen hundreds. <laughs> Wait, you have a weighted blanket, so a monster could be sitting on top of your chest, and you would never know. I'd be so peaceful. You'd probably sleep <laughs> better. <laughs> So can you shift a little bit so you cover the rest well, of my mind? Yeah, my the weighted blanket up. just ain't cutting it tonight. It's not heavy enough. Monster, come out, that's sit right, on my blanket. That's right. <laughs> Don't invite them in. Good <laughs> lord. They're not vampires. I think I'm just that monsters are fine. Bad Jet Lee's not fine. When we that's used fun. to play outside when we were kids, you know that was a thing. And your mom would just like lock the door, and be like, "Don't come back till it's dark." Yeah, my mom. Yeah. Did I that never to me. locked yep. the door. <laughs> oh yeah. They yeah my mom locked the door. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. She's like, get out. Click. Remember we used Slam to just door. stand at yep. the end of the driveway, That's what I'm and we just stand there and talk. It's like, oh yeah, we can't go inside. Yeah, yeah. And but I always had it ingrained in me that like when the lights started, the street lights started to come on. Yep. You get home because that's when the monsters come out. Right. Okay. Oh. And so like the chads. Like the ch the chads. The chads. <laughs> the chads. Yeah. The chads. The chads come, the chads come out. What's right. up, bro? Sure. No. Uh, so like we, the country? No. <laughs> sadly, <laughs> the Chadanians. Uh, that's when the Chadanians mm -hmm. come out. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. right. Uh, so he does get the gun from her. He takes her over to the window and kills her right in front of Jet Because he knows other Jet Lees out there. In the kit, in kid. like the spleen. In the spleen. Right. Shoots her a fatal shot to the spleen. There's no way. She Threw her back. That. She's not a veterinarian. No. So she like at kidney <laughs> level. <laughs> if just, she was a dog, she could have fixed herself. Yep. Right. right. But she wasn't. Nope. She was. Oh, Not that right. reminds me. I just have to go back really quick. Please. When um, oh, J Jude Law, what's his name? Gabe or you Law? No. Jude Law. Jude when, Law. when Jude Law was um, <laughs> was fighting, you uh, Law. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, what with Jude? Um, was fighting like and was just about to kill finally the boss. Yes. Guy. Um, he did the old uh, hold the guy's punch under your chin while. You oh yeah, that's right. And yeah. I was like, why don't we all do that? Just just hold. catch it with your throat and then punch yeah <laughs> it just seems like a waste of technique that we could all utilize it does but so. you know what that guy could have done he could have just started tickling him yeah oh my gosh. All right. yes. with his fingertips Could you yes. <laughs> come on dude go to, go to tickle you got to be able to switch it up never let your opponent know your next move never. exactly okay. you know no. he could have killed somebody with a boop he could have <laughs> they go flying uh, all right, so Gabe is now super angry. Uh, Yula runs out of there, and now Gabe is in pursuit, and he makes that angry, I'm I'm going to kill this guy face. Yeah, that's like a trope, isn't it? Oh, he yeah, saw, sure. sees him, kills his wife. Now he's all bought into, okay, I got to get this guy now. Because right. he was, until then, he wasn't like bought in, I felt. He didn't want to kill the guy. No. No, he was just trying to get away. Right. And now Jason Statham picks him up as Gabe's trying to get out of there, and they get some gas, while Gabe explains to Jason Statham that now I want to kill him. He says, how do I kill him? Beating up his car, right? beating up Jason's Poor car. Poor Jason Statham is just the exposition giver for the whole yeah. dark film. It's like, the, in my opinion, like the least fun kinds of lines to have. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because then the person just goes, uh-huh, oh. And yeah. you're just like, and here's more, but wait. Yeah, but there's another one of you, you know what I mean? I mean, Billy me. Mays was still you know around. I mean. He could have you know been, know been the one to do this. He just, but wait, there's more. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Intro intro to the Men in Black 2 Weapons Depot. Yes, right. <laughs> this is the noisy crick. What you're going to do is going to use this gun. <laughs> That's right. No mean. <laughs> no mean. <laughs> this is, uh, he's got the noisy cricket in the other one. And at this point, I thought maybe it was, he picked up the wrong game. I wasn't even sure this was the right game at this point, but it turns out it was. Yeah. Um, Good for him. He's like, I'm going to kill him. And I don't even care if you have to kill me afterwards, he says. Yeah. Like, I'm just, go ahead. Because I've got nothing to live for anymore anyway. Yeah. There was this weird moment where Delroy's version from this universe is working at the gas station. Yeah. And I, he says, Thank you for all the ways you've helped me. That's pretty cool. I kind of like that part. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. But then he'd already stolen a car. He stole gas because I'm sure he didn't have money from nope. that world. Nope. And then they broke a pole. When will it end? It won't end. He went in and called the cops, and that's the last time we see Delroy Lindo Bye, in this Delroy. movie. Speaking like, of this why world. Why did he? Yeah. Why did? What? Jason Statham knows they're in a 
alternate universe. Mm -hmm. Why would he think that now Delroy is the gas station attendant? Yeah, I don't know. Well, I think he, just he walk knew out? he just wanted to. It was like want to get off his chest. He just wanted to say it yeah. and have said it. But it's probably uh, like it wasn't Delroy. What are no. the odds? Like right, right. Oh gosh, yeah. the math is astronomical. Yep. Astronomical. <laughs> Astromath. And, um, yep. So he does say, all right, here's where we're going to get him. There's a wormhole that's going to open in an hour. And we'll go there, and, and this is where we'll be able to stop him. And the wormhole is in a refinery somewhere because, of course it is. Because I was going to say, another yes. trope, every final, final battle in a refinery. In a refinery. 90s in a metal in a, music. In a, yeah. Right. <laughs> battle in a it. manufacturing facility. Yeah. Jason Statham and Gabriel sneaking in there, and all of a sudden the little green nugget bomb comes flying out, and Jason goes, and they go and hide. And he goes, don't breathe for 20 seconds after this bomb goes off. And nobody counted with their fingers. No. <laughs> Not that I saw. And they're screaming as it you goes can, off. Yeah. So but scream your head off. That's yeah. okay. Just don't breathe. Just don't breathe. Right. Also, I guess exhaling's fine. <laughs> the explosion was like 30 seconds long. So you're holding <laughs> right. your breath for over a minute. Dude, Give I tried. Break. Am I the only one that started holding no, my dude, breath? No, dude, I was holding see? my breath. And I'm Probably. like, this ain't working. <laughs> I'm going to be dead. <laughs> Counting for them. I was, dude. And I'm like... I yeah. was counting. The second time I watched a movie, I was counting. I totally would have breathed. <laughs> right. They would have got me right it there. It should have been, been smashed over. by Meadow. Uh, <laughs> Statham gets up. He's the first one that gets up and gets to Eula, and they have a little bit of fight. And this was the biggest thing to me that bothered me with Statham's character. It's a character where Jason Statham can't fight. Yeah. Uh, he can't fight at all. It's because of his hair. All he does is shoot. <laughs> the and the, and there's the one fist fight he gets into, and he just gets smacked around. He breaks his ankle. He just, I'm like, why would they cast Jason Statham? I guess if he just wanted to be like ordinary cop guy, then have Dean Norris play yeah, that part. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. Dean Norris good. would have been great in that part. I Got was failed. happy. <laughs> yeah. But if he was going to get shot or smashed in the leg, actually, it was a smash. Yeah. But that at least they did keep that. He didn't just like run like in some movies right. where they're like, that's fine. I'm he, good. He at least continued to limp. Yeah. But it's, it's like, Casting Jean Claude Van Damme in a part where he doesn't know how to fight just as a stormtrooper, as a storm, yeah. right? No, it just right. doesn't make any damn yeah. sense. Yeah, right. At, I, a, at an an hour and five minutes or so, there's a part when he Jason Statham goes over a bar, and yeah. I, you can totally tell that someone hoisted him. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. He just was like blink. There's two hands where he's like, get yeah. me a lift. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he goes over. Now he did do. I don't know if they ever had a fight. I'm just like, oh, a Jason Statham Jet Li fight would have been awesome. Yeah. But they did another movie together, which is escaping me, another one-off, and then they were in all three Expendables movies together. So there was a total of five movies that they did. Maybe somewhere there's a, there is a Jason Statham versus Jet Li fight that I don't know about. If there is, I will try and find it. But uh, this I felt a little bit gypped because Jason Statham just got smacked around, basically. That was probably one of the other multiverses. Yeah. Uh, the movie's called War. War, 2007, huh. right? I am. Yep. Yeah, 2007, War, is another movie that the two of them did together besides the Expendable trilogy. Now it gets to the point where Gabe and Eula are facing off and they fight. And this fight was fantastic. Yes. There is all, all the nonsense aside, his his martial arts capabilities is is indisputable. The man can fight and, and choreograph a fight. In this case, it's him and a stunt man that looked like him that they painted his face green so they could pose his face on him for the other shots, which yeah. is a really cool thing yeah. to do. Yeah. Especially for the time, I thought very ambitious and it looked fine. I never thought at any point, like, oh, it's clearly not. You, you yeah. Could, yeah, you can see any sense of, well, they tried to record them right. twice and splice it together, or they, you know, did some CGI thing. It, oh, you yeah. know, it was definitely done well. I and was what, trying to figure that out because I was like, it doesn't look, it looks like two of them. It, it looked right. like two people fighting, exactly. Good. Yeah. Right. And there's all kinds of movies that have done the duel. Like Van Damme had a movie, Double Impact, where he fought himself. And, you know, uh, Schwarzenegger did a movie in the sixth day where he was there fighting himself. And it, there's always at least a couple shots where it looks wonky. Weird. But this I thought was really, really well done. And, and at the least fight he took good. down Finally. the jumpsuit so we know who was who. Yeah. So thank goodness one yeah. of them took their top off and, and now tied it I around. I ripped my shirt for no other reason than to help you all distinguish who we are. It's <laughs> for the audience. <laughs> That's right. You mind if I tie this off around my waist before we fight? Just but so his pants should have fallen down. Yeah, because there's no belt. No, there's no belt. It's a jumpsuit that that's he unzipped why he tied the top it. of. Yeah, All that's the, why he tied the arms. Yeah, yeah. He, but like, that, would, on, that wouldn't hold. Women up. who have purchased a jumpsuit know that when you go into the ladies' right. restroom, your pants. All right, we're talking look. about women's stuff now. Women's look. stuff. Women's stuff. Guys. Guys. Yeah. Yeah. La, la. Jet Li's <laughs> guys. Jet Li's hips don't lie. Okay. That's all right. That's fair. That's fair. Eula thinks that he has won. Did the Gabe is on the ground? motionless and he does his little win victory thing they did earlier in the movie but he didn't win because Gabe gets up and he 
almost does a Van Dam where he's going probably about as far as those little legs will get apart. Yeah. Right? Not quite the full Van Dam. Not quite the split. way, though. Yeah. But, you know. It was, it was impressive still. It was still okay. But it looked uncomfortable instead of cool. Real uncomfortable. Yeah. But they do this thing where they start switching up fighting styles, which I thought was really, really cool. That, you know, he would sw- he would show, like, I'm going to use this fighting style, and then the other guy would switch it up, and like then he would switch Kid it up. Like Karate Kid 3 for a minute there. Yeah. Oh, these two guys, not just this point, but multiple times throughout the movie, they love some air karate. Right. Yeah. Right? yeah. Just like an A-team, where they're wasting all their moves on the air. Yep. And thank God we had Jet Li knows so much, yet it moves left when they got to the yep. actual this, fight. This yep. movie would have been 10 minutes shorter without all these air karate montages. Don't waste your moves on the air. Right. Your what flying you crane s- is no match for my Wu-Tang style. <laughs> 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 Wu-Tang. Yes. Um, all right. So Gabe ends up kicking Eula into a pipe, and I don't know what that was, but it's green and it can't be good. This uh, it's the Ecto cooler from <laughs> the high sea boxes Dew. back in it's the day. Mountain Dew everywhere. They're in a Mountain Dew factory. Yes. That's what it is. Yeah, it's highly explosive. flammable and explosive. Mountain Dew. <laughs> that's that's a Mountain Dew refinery. Just before they refine it, it's ex- highly explosive. Oh, yeah. thank God he didn't crash into the red zone tank or whatever. What's the red? St- the red, red uh, bull. Cold red. red. Cold red. Cold red. Oh, red zone. I'm gonna say, say that red over. bull. Give him wings. <laughs> thank God he didn't crash into the code red tank. Then, right. Right. Because that yeah. would have been highly oh, explosive. Oof. Did you ever have like a 12 pack of code red and play video games? For yes. like 48 hours straight. Yes. yes, and I thought I was living, I thought I was on the moon. And your heart's like can explode, <laughs> and you're like, this is the greatest thing ever. Am I yes, missing out? Should I do it? It's guy stuff, no. okay? It's the Fuck opposite guy of stuff. what you When we go to the bathroom, stuff, you do that stuff. <laughs> you wouldn't get it. You wouldn't get, get it. it. You're not yeah. good. <laughs> right. Well, speaking of awesome manly things, when they walk through the fireworks, <laughs> how cool is oh, that? Yeah, the the spark spark showers. Showers. Yeah. sparks were just raining down. That was cool. That was a great shot. And, you know, yes, guys, well, just anybody, not just guys that watch and enjoy action movies those are the kind of moments you're like. luckily their hair and clothes were, were not totally flammable fine. not they, flammable at all they were covered well, that's in, why Jason covered Statham in Mountain couldn't be there either his hair would have <laughs> yeah. started on fire yeah. they put Vaseline all over ahead of time so they weren't flammable that's exactly what it was <laughs> made some fight better uh, he stops <laughs> so there's a final axe attack which I thought that was really cool where he stops the axe like right in front yeah. of his own face that was cool that was really really cool um, ultimately Eula is defeated by Gabe, and he tries to drag him out, or, or rather to the Drags point of the, the refinery where the wormhole is yep. going to be. And at the last moment, an explosion of maybe the code red tank explodes <laughs> and, <laughs> and lights Gabe on fire so that he has to rip his top off. And now you can't tell which one is Gabe and which one is Eula right as Jason Statham and the two of them are sucked into the wormhole. Yep. Yep. I was kind of hurt. Yeah, what were you, what were you I was waiting for that, like for them to be like, "There's a mix-up." I thought you said it's lame because I was going to be like, "Yes, it was." Because well, it was lame. It was. Ultimately, the mix-up lasts about two seconds yeah. and is very anticlimactic. Yeah. yeah, they're like, "All right, this is the guy." Like, no way, that's the other guy. Oh, okay, and they just <laughs> move. Jason like, no, Statham's like, bad. "No, this is the guy right here," because he notices the outline of the From the so ring on Gabe's away. hand. <laughs> right, and then he magically gets up on his broken ankle. He does. You're right. He does. It felt like a Dang it. a Rob Schneider pitch where they're like, <laughs> "Jet Li is in the switch up. Which <laughs> Jet Li is the good one? We don't know." <laughs> And and the Jet Li that is a uh, Gabe who was initially put in the chair to get sent to the hell wormhole doesn't say anything to protest. He's, he's awake. He's jiggling. Con- he's conscious, right? He's kind of jiggling around. I now. understand that, but some kind of like no, eyeballs I'm or something. Not actually right? evil. Like, some kind of eyeball. Give me some eyeballs, yeah. Jet Li. Some great eyeball actors out there. I need some eyeballs. He's and, not one of them. They, I mean, do no. they know what's going to happen though? I don't know. He's. I mean, he's just kind of. Oh, they're putting me in a, th- a chair. Maybe he did. Are we know. going for a ride? Regardless, Jason Statham switches them out at the right time, and U Law is sent to hell basically which we'll get to in a second now they're like what are we going to do with gabe we got it well we got to send him back and let he the didn't have his multiverse passport let him let the police who are waiting to arrest him Multipass? arrest him multi-pass <laughs> Lilo. Multi-pass. Uh, at least he'll be taken care of in prison. He, or, he didn't have his Disney Fast Pass or whatever. The so, they don't exist. Anymore. And so then. <laughs> Not the j- same. I know. Isn't that lame? Anyway, that's for another thing. Another day. But uh, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, but so Jason Statham at the last second goes, I know where he needs to go. And punches up, I don't know. Bibbity bobbity boops on the science computer, yeah, and that's accurate. And, and off he travels to some other dimension, where probably one of the other Gabe's was killed before he met TK. Yeah. How? Because, just 
Oh, I know what you're oh. gonna ask, and the answer is <laughs> the answer is there's no way. No. He must have the best Google search ever. <laughs> What's though? It's, it's it's Moogle. It's the multiverse yeah. version yeah. of Google. Right. <laughs> Let me Moogle it for you. Let me Moogle, Moogle it. You know what I mean? That's when you're skiing over those little bumps. And, and then he just <laughs> drops them right where that dog's going to get hit. I mean, that was... Right. The well, dog that he takes into the vet. This. That was too... Right. Yeah. It's the dog that he takes into the vet to meet his wife. And she is, in fact, there. And so the, the implication is that he's now starting over with his wife, which... Is would gotta be weird because you'd know all the stuff about her, and she's all like, I think I know you. Hey, you're that guy that went to prison for (laughs) (laughs) what happened and died. This was Dred's in that world, though. Wasn't he already killed? Right, maybe we don't know, though. Killed before he met her. Maybe this is the 126th universe. The dreadlocks, Jetly, because I think they're still creating. I don't know. I'm so confused. Anyway, the other Jet Li goes to hell, and there's all these prisoners that are, uh fresh fish, and maybe gives, it's got to be the best line yeah. in, in the entire movie, right? It is. A very unexpected best line. from Jet Li. Yeah. He says, you law is nobody's <laughs> You are mine. <laughs> he starts kicking ass. <laughs> but if, if you're in a terrible place, why would you keep fighting? I would just, like, sit around. Why I don't are they, know. Like, reaching up, that one I, really old there's lady. There's nothing I don't better know what to do. What's she going to do? He's I, the strongest there, though. I, he is the strongest there, but they kind of came at him, right? It wasn't I, his I think did. that whole fight is him protecting his butthole. I, I really think that's what's happening. They're like, here's this bar of soap. They, what, they, drop it. Yeah. what they didn't realize is there was still wire t- tied around his balls, so he's in ultimate <laughs> fighting mode. But you're right. It zooms out, <laughs> and it's like king of the hill kind of thing. He's on top of this like pyramid, pyramid. and all these dudes, and he k- keeps pulling out further and further and further out, and there's more and more dudes another rushing in. Another banging Papa Roach. Roach, Papa Roach yeah, yeah, another banger. Cut my life in. Two pieces. Yeah, like I'm like, let's go. Right. I don't know what's happening, but I'm happy it's happening. <laughs> Again, it's like the dude had my six CD changer from my car. <laughs> in 2001. How long that took to change a CD. Dude, once yeah. I put my six in there, it would it I'd have to never happen again. Move yeah. the earth and the heavens and mountains for me to change a CD but it didn't out of there. Stop me thing. for bringing a little CD case. <laughs> oh, you got to have it. Right. Or you got the right. visor CD thing, which only held like 12 discs. Right. That, yeah. was, like, that was a game changer, enough. though. But that was a game changer because you didn't have to unfold it. It was just right there. God, we're old. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> or you had the one where you put the tape in the tape player and had a wire yeah. going to your CD Yeah, I have one of those too. Yep. Right? Yep. Or I, I you're still fancy have and you had the the radio where it would tune in. Yes. That, I never had one of those, and I was always like, why can't I have that? If you're rich, that's what you have. Seriously. Yeah. That's the end of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Did we miss something? <laughs> Probably. But it was clean out of Probably, but we were too confused to realize it. We are going to move on to the awards uh, section of our show, where we are now going to start to dissect and and hand out some flowers to people that deserve it and trash cans to people that also deserve it. And at the end, we're going to make our determination. And so we start with the award that I would say is probably the most prestigious award we give out to the actor that embodied the most intensity in their role, even though they were in this ridiculous movie. They gave it everything they had. That's why we named this movie. That's why we named this award after Will Patton. It's the Will Patton Award for Intensity. You want a war? I'll give you a war! I don't want them to gain another yard. You blitz all night! If they cross the line of scrimmage, I'm gonna take every last one of you out. You make sure they remember forever the night they played the Titans. That's right. We're here, and we are going to go right over to the mayor for his nomination for the Will Patton Award. Uh, I'm going with Jason Statham. J- Jason Statham? Yeah, I, I think even though he was Expo Dump Man, he still had intensity delivering it. Yeah. The few scenes where he was kind of chasing you law down, I thought he was fairly intense, so I'm going with Jason Statham. All right, that's fair. Mel, who you got? I went with Jet Li, number 114. <laughs> Guys, which hair, which he's, hairstyle? He's the guy with the uh, the dreadlocks. Great. I got it. I mean, yeah. that was intense. That's Just good. That's good. Uh, Mark Gussick went with Dean Norris. Uh, I should say we have patrons that play along with us, guys. So like Mark Gussick, the goose is here. You want to be one of those people that do it, you can join our Patreon and you can participate on the show mm-hmm. as well. Uh, so he went with Dean Norris, Sergeant Siegel. This man was the most intense thing in the entire movie, and he was dead five minutes into the movie. And I can't disagree. I, I didn't pick him, but he was hyper intense. 
Like I said, he was just sweating. Just it's a great pick. There. Yeah, great pick. Sergeant Siegel or Sergeant Seagull? I, well, it's spelled Seagull. Ooh, oh, like uh, the bird? S-I-E-G-E-L. Oh, okay. All right, Seigel. gotcha. He, he probably won. It probably called, is like, Seagull. Yeah. The German pronunciation yeah, of that would exactly. be Seagull. Yeah. Uh, I went with Delroy Lindo. I thought... I thought he gave a very intense performance. He he seemed to be acting in a different movie than everybody else in that he thought this was a much more serious, yeah. gritty. He was my second choice. Uh, you know, he pl- really played up the history between the two of them and a man desperate to track this guy down and to make the t- decision if he was going to go against protocol and kill this guy that I'm assuming was a friend at one point. I just thought this dude was, like I said, acting in a different movie, yeah. if that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Sean... Spud McHugh is here, and Spud. He, he went with Jet Li hmm. for an actor who had only done three English-speaking roles before this. I thought he brought it and had to play multiple characters at that. He did a great job of making me believe that there were two and three, if you want to call it, count Lawless, separate. That there were two separate people from facial expressions, voice, and even fighting styles. Jet Li had been a star in China since the '80s, and it's a pity it took until Unleashed in 2005 to be a, in a good Hollywood movie. Also, no one else could deliver the line, I am you, law. I am nobody's b-. You are mine. And so that's a vote for Jet Li. Uh, no double votes yet, I don't think, right? No, because we have everybody. Jet Li 114 here with Jet Li Rasta 114. Here. It's a different Jet Li. Yeah, right. Jet Li. still yeah. not going to be yet. Yeah. Oh, perfect. So, Nicole, who's your nomination? The unnecessarily mean MRI nurse. <laughs> <laughs> she was brutal. Absolutely yeah. went hard. Yes. She did. She went hard on her one line. Yeah. Or like, well, multiple and just, just the eyebrows of disapproval. Yes. 114%. She was dialed in. Absolutely. I think that's a great pick for sure. Uh, so we got one more patron here, and Josh Whitehouse, the hammer himself, went with Jason, Jason Statham and his facial twitching um, all movie long. Played it just the entire movie. He looked confused or annoyed or something. I don't know. But from the opening scene in the car, his face was always twingy. He was trying to figure <laughs> out the, the plot. That's yeah. it. Okay, make any sense of this script, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> Why do I have an accent <laughs> in the multiverse? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, all right, that's two votes for Jason as we roll over to Dr. Madela for the final vote. Doctor, who you got? I got to weigh in with uh, Goose. Oh. Dean oh. Norris. Dean Norris. Oh. Well, we find ourselves here in a two way tie. Mm. Dean Norris and. Uh, Did you vote? I voted. Yeah. Yes, I, vote? I gave mine to Delroy Lindo. Oh so. yeah, 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 okay. But I, I'm I'm thinking not to go against Sean and Ryan here, but I the more I thought, about, I even mentioned it earlier in the episode, Dean Norris really was for sure super intense. I kind of am willing to change mine to Dean Norris. He looked no like he was crap diamonds. Yes, like he was just. Sweat. That's what I'm saying, dude. I, I, I I'm going with Dean Norris. If anybody else wants to change their vote to make this any other different. Nope. Then we're giving it to him. Dean Norris is going to win. Go Dean. Go Dean. The Will Patton Award for Intensity with Jason Statham, a close second. By a hair. By, a, unfortunately, a lot the of hair. A by tough, an MRI machine. A tough, <laughs> ton yeah. of hair. So, so all the hair. <laughs> speaking of terrible things, the next award we give out is the coveted, the highly coveted, trash can full of dirt award that we give out to whoever was the worst actor in the movie the one who displayed the acting range of a trash can full of dirt just like our buddy steven siegel trash can oh trash can it's a trash can full of dirt yeah love never dies and neither does they <laughs> love is eternal and that's a long time that's right. And Steven Seagal will never be matched. He is the namesake of the trash can. But who else can we throw in there with him today? Mueller, who's your nomination for the oh, trash geez. can? Oh, um, You know, I was thinking at first, um, Carla, what's her name? Is it Carla? Carla Gugino? I was kind of thinking her. Um, <laughs> I'll join you. Y- yeah. Just, and it, it really just... Because of that first scene, I think she pops in with Gabe, and or yeah. maybe it's the one in the hospital where it's all like, or maybe at home, whatever, no yeah. chemistry. Yeah. You know, in the end, I'm just going to give it to all the cops that got shot. <laughs> like, I mean, they could have had trash cans doing all that. All right. I mean, there was just nothing there. Fair enough. No reason. Fair enough. You throwing Bobby in there with him? I don't think I can throw Bobby in there. All right. But... That's all fine. the other ones, like all his buddies, you know, at yeah. the hospital, all his buddies. I got you. I'll go with them. His all buddy right. cops outside of Bobby. 
Mark Gusick went with, uh, he goes, the Steven Siegel trash can full of dirt that he probably thought he made. Is what it, <laughs> how he <laughs> phrased this. I invented trash cans. <laughs> it's totally fine to give me this award because I made them. Jason Statham is who he gave the trash can to. I wasn't sure if he wasn't if he was trying for an American accent, a British accent, or both. They were both equally terrible in this movie, along with him clinging to what little hair he had left. <laughs> like Siegel clings to the fact that he can act. I love it. It's a good take. Hot I mean, take from Mark. It's it, it, it was like a new London goose. It was like a new London accent. It's kind of New York. It's London. There is new London, Connecticut. He kind of went back and forth between the two of them. Maybe even a little Sydney in there. <laughs> As the uh, linguist, yeah, the professional speaker. Uh, Are you a linguist? Well, I mean, what what was his accent? How many languages do you speak? Well, I mean, I, I two. Oh, nice! I didn't know that. <laughs> What's the other one? Italian. Do you speak Italian? Yeah. Nicole, I've known you for 20 years. How did I not know you spoke Italian? I mean, it's conversational. I can't get into, like, science, right. but I can talk to your grandma. I'm going to um, ask you about that in another episode. Benny Smith. You just wait. Um, the, I was going to say, Jet Li, also, <laughs> yeah. his American accent was many places. I'm sure he got coached, oh, yes. you know, very oh, yeah. differently throughout. Yeah, oh, for sure. Uh, Mel, who's your? So we've got one for Jason Statham and one for the cops. Who's yours? Jet Li. Jet Li. In everything that he wasn't fighting. Okay, so other than the fighting. Other than the fighting. Yeah. Otherwise, there was... Well, this, is just especially, a, this is an acting award, so yeah. Yeah, especially with between him and his wife. Yeah. It, there was just... It was cardboard. Cardboard yeah. cutouts. Yeah. That so thought, I don't disagree. That thought did cross my mind, too. I don't disagree. And I gave... I didn't do it because of the fighting scenes. I know he's not a native... Well, I'll get to mine in a second here. Let's go. Sean says, I typically like Jason Statham, but not so much in this one. I suppose you could chalk it up to this being one of his first few big Hollywood roles, but no, he killed it in Lock, Stock, and Snatch. In Lock, Stock, Smoking Barrels, and, or Two Smoking Barrels, and Snatch. <laughs> he put Lock, Stock, and Snatch. Yeah. That's, like, that's not the name of the movie. That'd be a funny one. Uh, once again, like seen the, that one. it's a pity it took until 2003, the Italian job, for him to finally do good in a Hollywood film. That's a second patron that went with Jason Statham and so I am in a position here where I could either give a second vote to Jet Li I literally J uh, Mel you can see here it says Jet Li or Jason Statham I had not yet when I wrote this I, I do see that made up confirmed. My mind. I had not made up my mind yet I was waiting to get into the room to see how I felt about it and and Sean swayed me a little bit with the, like he did do a good job at, at differentiating between the two characters mm -hmm. at least you could tell when one was the other and you didn't have to have context clues necessarily but then any dialogue, and I know he's not a native speaker, but at least like Van Damme or Jackie, Jack, Jackie Chan, Chan, Jackie Chan yeah. had charisma in buckets. The Riz. Did all that, right? And so this something that Jet Li, who I've never really been able to get too into, a great martial artist, he just to me doesn't have that thing that the Van Dams and the Jackie Chans of the world right. have, yeah. which is, or even Arnold, who's not a great actor, is just... Buckets and buckets of charisma, and Jet does not have that. I was waiting for him to say, "I did not, I did not shoot her." Yeah, it was almost oh, on a level. Hi, Mark. It was almost on a level with 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 him. I'm gonna go Jet Li. I I, I could have gone either way, but I'll give a second vote. We'll tie it up two two here between Statham and Lee. Uh, Nicole, who's your nomination? There was a very very short morgue scene. Yeah. When oh, Jet yeah. Li comes out. And he's come. And oh, he hit in a body bag. Yeah, yeah. And that scene was. I mean, it was comic relief. They're talking about adult films, etc. Right. But those two, they tie those two guys. <laughs> yeah, I kind of <laughs> skipped over that because it was kind of a nothing. Yeah. Scene, yeah. not even really worth this of recounting. Yeah. But worthy to go back for this reason because right. they were both terrible. Body bag full of dirt. Yeah, body bag, <laughs> full, bag of dirt full of dirt for those guys, and and very good and. And worthy Nicole's giving choice, away a, a body bag full without of dirt without hesitation. Oh. Without hesitation, I love it. Wow. Yeah, Most also again. The scene itself was pointless as well. Yeah, yeah. Like they did fine, but right. yeah, they could have just had him driving away in the corners, man. We didn't need that. Yeah. Uh, all right, Josh Whitehouse went with uh, Jet Li squared. He was beyond horrible in both roles. He looked like he was constipated on the toilet almost the entire movie. <laughs> he probably was so scared because of English and absolutely no chemistry whatsoever with TK. Also, so yeah, Josh agrees with that. But the hammer brings it down on Jet Li. So it's three to two right now as we go over to you. I mean, I have to speak for you, but if it's Statham, we have to force Nicole to make a tiebreaker. Tell here. us why it's Jet Li. <laughs> so, 
out of respect for Rachel Weiss, who's like the the stage three evolution version of Carla. Yes. Oh, like, between have, those two, we're yeah. not. No, no, no. But I'm no, saying no. she's yeah. like that's that's why I can't vote for Carla because yeah. she's like in the same. You see those where they side by side people, and you're yeah. like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um. Yeah, man. I respect it. I can't go with I can't go with Jet Li. I literally can't. Uh, that's like, fine. Who are you going with? I have with? too much respect for him being not a native speaker. And I get what yeah. you're saying about the charisma, but... He's just a block of wood. That's my problem. But yeah, he I can get fight. You. He Dude could smack me around in four seconds. Like, it's not a knock on his fighting. Right. But well, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm, it's your yeah. time. It's your time. Um, I'm going to go with Nicole's with her more guys. With the more guys? Yeah. All right. Well, that means that Jet Li Jet is going to win. Jet I was going to say, on. otherwise I would switch too because Jet Li was in my yes. thought process. So, All right, Jet Li. He wins. He Ooh. wins 126 to two. <laughs> he did play a lot of characters. Jet Li just won a – oh, gosh. People are going to be so mad at us. We just gave Jet Li a uh. trash can full of dirt. We're sorry. Yeah, here come the Facebook comments now. Not sorry. All right. Uh, <laughs> the next award we give out is to the uh, somebody in a bit role, a non-lead character who was an unsung hero in the movie that made the movie better just by being in it, just like Mr. Steve James. You know, every place you go, there's always someone who thinks he's a badass, right? Yeah. Then there are those few who are. Are you still kind of a badass karate boy? That's right. Steve James is looking for people that measure up. He says there are few that are. Who measures up to Steve James in someone that saved this movie and made it better? We're starting back down here with Mueller. Delroy Lindo. Delroy Lindo. I love that guy. Yeah, I do too. I always think Everything of him as the in. FBI agent from Ransom with Mel Gibson. Yeah, right. Yep. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's yes. And I thought, yeah, he was only in, you know, a little bit of the movie. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Needed more of them. I agree. I agree. Uh, Mark Gussick went also with Delroy Lindo, said, I don't feel like he's in the movie enough to be a main cast member. He goes, but I'm not picking anybody else. He goes, either him or nobody. So <laughs> right. perfect. that's where I was. Two votes yep. for Delroy. Mel? Delroy was also in uh, Get Shorty, wasn't he? Yes. He was. He was. And for that, Delroy Lindo. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Delroy Lindo. He was in another movie we did. Was it Free Jack? I feel like it was Free Jack. I can't remember. There was another Delroy Lindo He's movie. All that in we did. Like he was in Broken few, Arrow. Yeah. Broken, was in Broken Arrow. Broken yeah, Arrow. Yeah, that yep. was it. Broken that's Arrow. It. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So that's another vote there. Uh, Sean McHugh said, I really like Delroy Lindo. There we go. And I wish he would have had a bigger part. I would have liked to have seen some flashbacks with him and Eula before he went crazy. Maybe Rodeker was there. Rodeker, that's Jason. Oh, that's, that's, that's Delroy's Delroy. character. We yeah. just called him Delroy the whole time. Right. That's who <laughs> that is. Uh, and there was when Eula killed his first double. Maybe he tried to talk him out of it. I think we could have benefited from more of him and that, more of that. Back. That would have made help the movie make sense, I think, Way if they would have had better. some of that. Yes, yep. absolutely. Good point. Um, I I went with Carla Gugino as my unsung hero of the movie, just because to she, me she brought the rat in. No, exploding not rat. The exploding rat. <laughs> I just like, gosh, I'm so happy she's in this movie. If she wasn't in this, it would have been far more, yeah. far less enjoyable for me. And I'm a fan, so uh, for her, for me, she. I like her. Um, <laughs> and I'm guessing, like, I'm guessing she's the one who came up. Well, probably she, Jason yeah. Statham, too, came up, like, lines memorized, ready yes. to go. Yeah. She seemed like she took it seriously. And, yes, and she did. Great job. Yep. Um, yeah. Because I feel like Delroy is going to win, I have a, a second, uh, I'm going to say one that's very small. Mm -hmm. um, like, 32 minutes in, um, he... He's got his friends from work, and the one of them's got like a green, an army green jacket on. Okay. And they're waiting for the MRI scene to happen. Oh yeah. And it made me laugh. So that's why it rescued it for me. <laughs> he was he was listening to a stethoscope from the nurse on the nurse for like oh, yeah. for like <laughs> yeah. It was at thirty two minutes and thirty seconds, and we cracked up and kept reminding like, is he? It, I, it was I like, didn't even notice it. it. You wouldn't. It's like two seconds of it, but I'm like, what is? Is he? Is he? And so he puts the headphones. No, what do you call it? Stethoscope. Stethoscope. Ear parts and uh it's just like listening to her but not enough that you think it's weird that he's like yeah getting all crazy but right. um it cracked me up and that what an interesting piece of business they gave him or fun. he came up with on his own Ex or they were whatever. like stop yeah. it stop fine it's getting in it's the only scene we had fine and we're not so, shooting this again all right so just for that so that's that's like a thing there's this like thing between nurses yeah and police oh yeah it's it's 
All right, so Josh said this goes to the only actor that had more than two scenes that actually cared to act, and that was a and that was the great Delroy Lindo playing Rodiker. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Always been a huge fan of his, and he actually gave the only good performance of the main actors. And so that's a fifth vote as we go <laughs> to Ryan. It's already in the bag, but you still get to put on the record who you want to champion over there. For the record, I would just say I would say <coughs> Dean Norris. Dean Norris. Okay. I know I doubled all up right. there, but that's all right. That's fine. It's a good pick. It's a good pick. Uh, that means that ultimately, though, and well deserved, yeah. I think, Delroy Lindo is going to win the Steve James Unsung Hero yeah. Award. I now, would easily have done the tiebreaker for him. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay. And and we do, I should say that uh, Sean did throw in every once in a while, especially when Bob is here, we give out the Cheryl and Fenn Hot Babe Award, and we did get one handed out today by Sean McHugh. Does want to give that to Carla Gugino from, uh, as a gift from him to her. Wow. Uh, he says, the purple dress, the high heels, what more is there is to say? So there, Cheryl and She's Fenn. about the only one. Well, who's the Rain Award then? Um, not Jason Statham, not with that haircut. <laughs> Dean Norris? You could do Dean Norris, Delroy. 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 Delroy Lindo. It's got to be Delroy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is, uh, we're going to get on board the positivity train here. This is where we have to be. Even if you hated this movie, give me three of your favorite things. What were the three things in the movie that you enjoyed? Ryan, we're going to you first. All right, uh, three, let's go with, uh, you know, I'll go with Carla with the rat. Mm. You know, the rat in a shoe, that was kind of so weird. Kind of weird, but I enjoyed it. Um, two, just Jet Li's martial arts. I mean, you, you know, you can't argue with it. He was pretty good. Yep. Number one, the soundtrack. The soundtrack, <laughs> yes. Mark said the classic cars that these multiverse guys kept magically finding to drive around in. That was nice. <laughs> and the one they destroyed. <laughs> That's right. The uh, martial arts were top notch. That was the second thing. And his third thing was Carla Gugino. Look, we've had various conversations about our thoughts on her in the Discord. I'll leave it there. That's right. They have the guys like to discuss Carla Gugino, among other people, in our Discord. And if you want to be part of those chats, you can do that. Just got to back us on Patreon. And all that info is in the show description. You can get on there and chat with us in between shows. It's a lot of fun. And we get into all kinds of nonsense on there. We do. Mel, who's your, uh, or what are your three favorite things? Carla. Yep. The soundtrack. Yes. Right and, answer. And honestly, the fights. Yeah. yeah. It's, just, oh, it's yeah. just good good fun. Yeah. yeah. And if it's redundant across the board, that's okay. It just shows that those were the good, those were the best things in the movie, best right? Best uh, Sean McHugh said the Spy Kids phone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the Nokia wormhole finder. He goes, I know the expanding phone is supposed to seem all high tech and futuristic, but the few times it popped up, I expected Carmen and Junie to pop up with phones of their own. <laughs> Number two, Jet Li versus Jet Li, filmed with a stunt double. Yes, that was awesome. That was Shout good. out also to the scene where he stops the axe an inch from his face. And number one, the soundtrack full of early 2000s bangers, Down With a Sickness, Bodies, Last Resort, all, all these bands and songs I still listen to to this day and especially love how they tied the scream from Down With a Sickness into the explosion in the escape room. Big fan of movies tie music into scenes like that. <laughs> Great take from Sean. And Sean, I agree with you because my three favorite things were the final fight between Jet Li and Jet Li, the early aughts rock soundtrack yep. was awesome, and the one thing I'll say that's different, that at least and maybe you guys still have this as yours, is I did enjoy the entire concept of the movie I thought was interesting. This idea of multiverse has been done, but this idea that you could go and just take yourself out of all of them to make yourself and stronger. And powers. I thought that was an interesting concept, and so I at least was interested and enjoyed that myself. Nicole, what do you got? Uh, the first thing that I liked wasn't actually funny but i laughed so hard at it that it's still great for me was <laughs> how bad his dancing was jet Li's when he was in the car turning up the music yes real bad so i loved it <laughs> that was positive for me um two was yes that there was a rat in her shoe come on amazing it didn't like go with anything else in the film so that was nope Fun for me, but not for the film. And then uh, I just love that she had to go to the restroom for lady reasons. That's right. That was such a great, yep. great moment. Secret code. Your, uh, your Pittsburgh just came out a little bit when you said positive. And I always enjoy <laughs> when that happens. Positive. It's a big positive for me, yeah. like, a, like a dog's paw. Yeah. I, I knew someone who once said penny pasta for Wait, penne pasta. pasta. <laughs> All right, let's go here. Josh Whitehouse, the hammer says, when Delroy knocks out the CT scan guy, when oh, actually I think it was uh, Jason Statham, was Statham. Jason Statham yeah. that did it, when he won't let go of him and says, be still, uh, was awesome. The effects of the wormhole when they're traveling place to place, uh, thought thought that was the best CGI <laughs> in the movie. They just start going. Blah, 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 blah. Well, it certainly was probably the most believable CGI. Yeah. In the movie. That'd be fun to shoot. Like just wiggle yeah. and jiggle around as much as you can. Right. 
Gabe saving the dog at the end of the movie. It was really hard to find a third thing, but I promised I would plant my flag, so here it is. He really didn't want to give three favorite things. Josh, for this. We finally end up at the kids' table over there with Dr. Madela. What do you got for me, bud? So I'd say the martial arts... I'm yeah. always a fan of Jet Li's yeah. work with, the, with his martial arts. He's just incredible. Yeah. Um, I'd say uh, the I do like the concept a lot, of just in general. Yeah. And then uh, that that rifle that Dean Norris has, that yes. has a shotgun on the bottom is pretty sweet. That <laughs> Weapons always get me in movies. We I'm know what like, Mattel is getting for Christmas. Yeah, right? <laughs> All right. You make that happen? Uh, Uncle, not, Mel. <laughs> I, Uncle Mel. Mel. I can't answer that question All right, after a voting accident. Not <laughs> we'll take this offline. We'll take this Join offline. the Discord and you'll find out. <laughs> I, I think that which we'll get to our final opinions here in a second. But I do think that there is definitely one way that we could have made this movie better. I know this is a wild idea we don't usually talk about. But what if we recast the movie with somebody else, maybe through another well-known action actor in yeah. there? Steven Seagal? No. Well, <laughs> I'm David the, Carradine. I'm the one. Movie's over. <laughs> <laughs> I invented action movies. <laughs> Do you imagine a movie with Steven Seagal going around to kill all the other Steven Seagals? It's, yeah, right. That would be amazing. <laughs> it's, instead of a rat and Carla Gugino shoe, it'd be mini Steven Seagal. <laughs> you, get the, you get the pictures, and it'd be like bald Steven Seagal, <laughs> afro Steven Seagal. <laughs> He goes through, and he just goes all these dimensions and just slap fights each other. Chair fighting Steven Seagal. <laughs> They're both in chairs <laughs> fighting each other. <laughs> Come on. From sit and be fit. That's right. Watching Steven Seagal get the crap beat out of him, even if it's by Steven Seagal, that yeah. would be that would make the movie better. There would be no. Absolutely. There would be. Don't kid yourself. There would be, be no, no punches landed, landed and all, all that. <laughs> He'd be winded. I'm not okay. going to slap myself. Unfortunately. I'm, <laughs> Unfortunately, I wasn't able to defeat any of my other selves, and so there will just continue to be 123 of us. But we're all going to have Because none of us could land a shot because we block everything. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Just give us the ultimate powers. Mm. We're all the greatest fighters. That's right. There's 153 ones. Don't do the math. (laughs) (laughs) All right. No, I was talking about Arnold. If Arnold could get into this movie. Oh, yeah. Arnold. Okay. Arnold doesn't mind fighting himself. I mean, Arnold went at it with himself in The Sixth Day, but also he even talked to himself in Total Recall, right? You are not you. You are me, Hmm. right? Through go to Mars and do all that stuff. And so we get Arnold. Can you? I know sometimes we like to get clever, but forget all this. And I know Jet Li, I know you're a fan, Ryan. I'm sorry. But just take Jet Li out of the movie and an Arnold movie where Arnold has to go around and kill Kill all the other Arnolds. Arnolds. Right? Come on! I could actually see that. That would be incredible. Most of the time, it doesn't fit when you say that. No. But here, can, it's totally. Can right. you imagine no, Dreadlock Arnold <laughs> on the scroll through? The Lilo multipass. Yes, there. emo Arnold. Come on! It would it, be so it, great. It feels like it fits closer to Arnold's uh, what, what he normally does. Right. Too. So That's it what I'm definitely saying. would work. I think it would have been an incredible movie. And if you really wanted to get meta and you could figure out the rights issues, he, it's like. Terminator in this one, yeah. Dutch in this one. Right. Oh, right. oh yeah. And like you're literally having to go and kill all the Arnold characters. Right. Twins. Oh, the twins, twins Arnold. Arnold. Kindergarten Hollywood cop meta. Arnold. Yeah, it would be incredible. It'd be awesome. Jingle all the way, Arnold. You imagine? <laughs> Complete with Turbo Man. Take He's out like, Sinbad while you're at it. Turbo <laughs> Man's fighting Terminator just gets ripped in half. <laughs> <laughs> it's Turbo. Th- <laughs> <laughs> and he walks in, he's like, I'll be back. He's like, no, no, I already said I'll be back. I'll be back first. You cannot because I'm already back now. Right? It'd be like you get caught in an internal yeah, loop right. of I'll be we back. We are the two. <laughs> Conan Arnold. Hey, James, I have yes. a question. What if if uh, what if what Arnold Schwarzenegger and Chewbacca were combined? <laughs> what would it sound like, James? <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. He's got to go. <laughs> All I wanted to do was watch you try. I don't care what it sounds like. I can't do it. It took me a second to get into the Chewbacca. There. Right. Oh, great. Good thing I had that water. <laughs> You know, <laughs> this brings up a great idea for an Arnold tournament fighting game yeah, of just yeah, all the different right. Arnolds. Oh, like a smooper, a smooper, a smooper, smooper Smash Brothers. Yes, with, with Arnold, or like a, a Mortal Kombat type thing. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Uh, Arnold Kombat. Mm. 
is Arnold Combat. Finish him. Now! It's not a tumor. <laughs> it's not a tumor at all. I'll be back to do it. All right. Thanks, thanks for, the, for the tip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a cop, you idiot. <laughs> Just have all those one-liners. I'm Detective John moves. Kimball. All right, where are I don't even know where we are anymore. Oh, Sean does want to say, I think the easiest answer would be to swap out Jet Li, but Arnie versus Arnie, how awesome would that be? I don't want to lose Jet Li, so I think I'd rather see him as Funch. At least Ooh. then the fight scene would have been better. Arnie versus Jet Li. Yeah, but Funch was such a crummy expo yeah, character. You'd have to get that rewritten, though. You'd have to yeah. rewrite it. He and, wouldn't be right. the expo dump. No, like Delroy and him would be one character, and it's one future cop that's pursuing right. Jet Li Can yeah. around. And then imagine it's Arnold. Arnold trying to expo dump that. That would not work. Oh, gosh. <laughs> he The only time he ever worked as an expo dumper was in T2. Was in T2 when he was like, and then at this time, Cyberdyne became self-aware and Skynet was active. And he like does that whole speech about like right, this. Right. Yep. Is that whole expo dump? But because he's a robot and it's just like, dit, 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 it was great. But yeah, he's never of, been. Then it works. Right. Or but, in the yeah. cut scene of uh, T3. Yeah, with like, Sergeant Hi Candy. There. <laughs> I'm Sergeant Candy. <laughs> I love that. That was so good. We can fix it. All right, guys, it's time to land this plane. So we have to ultimately come to a decision here. We have to decide we've picked this thing apart from every single angle we've juggled with the, th the parts of it that we didn't understand maybe we've worked something out amongst all of us and now we have a greater understanding of the movie but ultimately we have to plant our flag and what we think about this mm. so ryan mueller I'll, I'll go to you what's your final rating for this movie boy you know i had to come up with this on the fly because it's just confused i didn't know where to land on this yeah. um we're gonna be a little simple today you got shag rug, your dog s in it, you're walking through the house in your slippers, you step in it, you don't notice you step in it, but are confused where some odor's coming from, it seems to be following you around the house. Yeah. To me, this is, it's a bad movie. I wow. Honestly, this shouldn't be above Air America, any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. Um, yeah, it had some redeeming qualities with the martial arts, it had... You know, a, a moment or two with some of the you know side characters like um, uh, Delroy Lindo and Dean Norris. You know, some of that, but not enough of that. I got you. They didn't do enough to explain like how things came to be. I mean, they could have taken another. They could have like not did all the slow mo and used the ten minutes of slow mo in this movie <laughs> to do the ten minutes of kind of expo between Jet Li and Delroy. Yeah, right. Uh, what happened there? I mean, it's just, it, it's a bad movie. All right, fair enough. Uh, Mark Gussick said, it, uh, was it just me or did it seem like this movie was trying too much to make itself akin to The Matrix, but mm -hmm. a whole lot worse? Yeah, yep. absolutely, Mark. The effects were off-putting, a little overdone. When Jet Li is falling at the end fight, they just hit the ground weird. I don't know how to exactly really describe. Yeah, he went over a railing and like the landing yeah, was not. it was weird. Yeah, yeah, it was weird. Yep. Um, I don't know how to describe it, but it was off. Statham was underused. I would have liked to have seen him use some martial arts, but instead he was relegated to just doing whatever he was doing, which was not doing anything good for the most part. Dog poop time. Remember, he, you and him are the brothers of this we scale. Are. This movie is like when you come home to find that your dog pooped in the corner of your favorite throw rug, and you think to yourself, that's not too bad. However, you look again and see that he dragged his ass all over the carpet, leaving stains everywhere, which equates to... A straight up bad movie. Yeah. I really wanted to like this, but I couldn't get into it. It was such a mess from the beginning to the end, especially the intro narration. So that's two. Mark and Ryan have already said bad movie straight up. Those scales were really close to each other. And they were close. They're yeah. dragging it around. Their minds are starting to melt. They're going to become are. the one. Right. We are <laughs> we are working on becoming the one. Where's, Where's your beard? <laughs> I got a sweet beard. Yeah, that's right. I, I could. All but. right, Mel, where you at on this, bud? All right, so when you watch a, a BMR movie, you yeah. pop some melatonin, <laughs> and you try and stay awake. <laughs> and let me tell you. Either way. As soon as that uh, Disturb dropped. Yeah. As soon as that Papa Roach hit in. Yeah. I'll tell you, this this was a bad movie that ruled. Oh, there you go. All right. It, it, was, it was fun to watch, even if I was trying to stay awake. <laughs> Perfect. I appreciate that, man. I actually fell asleep while I was watching it on the plane Friday. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> so, Flying up in the no, air somewhere. No melatonin. <laughs> Sean McHugh said that this is a straight-up good movie. Look, 
I like this movie. I liked it when I first saw it, and I still do. Yeah, the effects didn't age well, and you can tell they tried a little bit too hard for that Matrix feel. See, everybody's able to peg this it's thing. It's the Matrix. About it the is. Matrix. It's got to be a, a thing if everybody's saying yeah. the same it was thing. it's so huge at that time. Yeah, Just, it was. And it's an obvious, and I mean, they obviously copied numerous yeah. elements from the yes. movie, from the Matrix. And Sean says, but all in all, it's an enjoyable film. It was well shot, well acted, for the most part, and the fight scenes were good, so I, I may be in the minority here, given what I read on the Discord, but I'm planting my flag as james tells us to do good movie and you know what i appreciate sean that you just made that call even if we don't necessarily agree on that because i personally am with mel here and that i wrestled with this and i know brian you and i had a conversation where i was like i don't know i was waffling back and forth between almost all of the choices but then at the end i'm like i don't i just don't think it's a straight up bad movie it's clearly not a good movie. I'm going to land on bad movie that rules. It's not my favorite movie that we've done that I would put in that category, but there was enough elements. I'm a sucker for martial arts and, and you know, these kind of fighting movies. There should have been way more fights. There's only the, really the one big fight at the end. Give me more Jet Li fighting, but I'm going to say barely it's a bad movie that rules for me. Uh, yeah, Nicole. I like to say that everything is good and show how they, they all tried, right? Yeah. And I, it, with that spirit... I think this movie had a chance, like so many chances that if they swapped in a different yeah. love interest mm -hmm. that actually had chemistry, or if they just didn't have, you know, gunfight scenes in a Jet Li movie, but just did, you <laughs> yeah. know, fist fighting. Yeah, using the, <laughs> the, yeah. The, the the woo, right? Um, so, but because they didn't do any of that, I think it's just a bad movie. Oh wow! Oh, and I don't like saying. I don't think oh, it needed right. a love interest, honestly. Yeah, at all. Well, maybe. Yeah. To to your point, I think if they would have just killed that i mean there's some of the chemistry problems gone right there because yeah. i don't know that they could have put anybody in that role and they would have had chemistry so they them would have some other device then like something to replace it but maybe probably just, again one of those animals as a friend that could a dog been. yeah His dog. <laughs> so <laughs> that by my count is three bad movies yeah. two yep. bad movies that rule Sorry. and one good movie as we go here to the hammer josh whitehouse why did they borrow the uniforms from demolition man <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, they looked absolutely the same. Why does Yula sometimes have unlimited powers and then he doesn't? Does he run out of stamina or something? The horribly looking barbed wire on top of the wall that was so freaking fake? Metal music from Drowning Pool slash Disturb just forced in for no reason. This is a bad movie that sucks full stop. Real <laughs> short and to the point ah. from The Hammer. Dropping it down here on the ones. The so that's Hammer our dropping fourth, the hammer on Our it. fourth straight up bad movie vote. Uh, as we go to, Doctor, you get the final word here, man. I think that uh, you guys all have hit it on the head where like, Jet Li needed more time fighting. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of misses. Mm -hmm. That being said, though. This is definitely a, objectively a bad movie, but it rules. It's, All right. It's a fun movie to watch, Ooh. even though you can see some cringe. You can see some things that don't last, but it's a fun movie. See, isn't that interesting? I think that's a great take, Ryan, and I think that's really interesting that we ended up landing here because we got four straight up bad and then four positive, like one good and three bad that rules, which I would consider there's to be There's your 50-50. And there's our 50-50, which is what yeah. we talked about when we started this episode. Yeah. Right? The audience score is at 51%. Right. And here we are, right? And so it lined up right probably where it should have been. But I, I didn't hate my time with it, and I think it was a worthy movie to do here on the show. And so thanks to whoever suggested that, or I don't remember how it ended up on our list, but poll. What was it? It's a poll winner. Oh, it was a poll winner. Yeah. Oh, that's oh. right. This was a Patreon poll winner. Thank you. So, so thank, thank you, you guys patrons. for voting for this, for uh, making this an episode. We got a chance to talk about another, or, uh, maybe our only at this point, Jet Li movie. I think it is. Next week, though, we are talking about somebody. This will be the third movie of his that we have done before. And I'm excited any time <laughs> we get. I, last time we did one of his movies, we had Bob in here ripping his shirt off. That's right. We got a Hulk Hogan movie on the docket wow. next week. Let's go, brother. That's right, because it's Christmas time coming up. And so what you going to do when Santa Claus with muscles wreaks havoc on you? Snap into Christmas. That's right. That's <laughs> Literally the name of the movie, Santa with Muscles. Wow. And it's starring Hulk Hogan and a tiny little kid, Mila Kunis. Oh, my Is oh. in the movie wow. with him as well. So we'll be talking about the Hulkster next week, and I'm excited uh, for that. And Bob will be in here, of course, because it's a Hulk Hogan movie. And uh, I think Joe will be in here for that as well. And so looking forward to getting the guys in to talk about a little bit of that. I'm going to go out on a limb here. Yeah. 
bad mustache that rules. <laughs> well, it's because you're rocking the Hogan stash right exactly. now. I love it. And it works, man. Some people can pull it off. I can't. I can't. Uh, you definitely no. can't. I try. No. But, you know, we'll just keep we'll just keep trying to find a thing that works. I'm on my, you know, I'm on this beard for five years. I think it's time to just shave the middle of it out. So I just have the big See what you got chop. the chops. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Barry Arthur yeah. Going there you go. Stash. Rob talked about that last week, and I've been thinking about it ever yeah. since. I think I'm going to go with the Chester A. Arthur. 27th vice president. That's right. It's good stuff. Well, thank you guys all for listening. Thanks to our patrons for your support and for backing the show. And we will catch you guys next week with Santa with Muscles. Jason, cut your hair. I hate it, hate it, hate it. (laughs) (laughs) But you're a pretty good actor. So there's that. <laughs> you do great. Don't deny it. <laughs> Rogaine with minoxidil. Just do what Bruce Willis did. They did have the same hairstyle. They just take it oh, up. Bruce yeah. just said enough. And so did him eventually. So did he. Eventually. Yeah. Just not soon enough. Great job, Jason. You're the statemist. It's like, just get a bick, man. A bick. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Bick. <laughs> Apples and pears. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>